How do you want to do this? You I'll do take it. I guess you do the lineup. You okay. do the lineup, and I'll do the pop around. All right. Dishbalk Field, and we take a look at the big grandstand that will house tonight the crowd that is here to see the championship golf ball game between Texas and Arkansas as we look at home plate where the coaches, the umpires, and Art Blair, the director of the tournament from the Southwest Conference, have gathered. I'm Bill Little with Steve Ross, Texas and Arkansas in the championship game of the Southwest Conference Baseball Tournament. Last night, we did not mean to trick you. We talked about the fact <laughs> that that was the championship game in a double elimination tournament. You have to lose two to go home. And the Razorbacks were not ready to leave at all last night. They came away with a 5-4 to four win over Texas, and they now have moved uh, to a position where they can win it all, Steve. That's right. The University of Texas once again will be the visiting team. Now, this is, of course, their home field, but uh, the way the double elimination tournament works through coin flips and whatnot, Texas will be the visiting team. And here's their starting lineup. Bill Bates will lead off at second base. Mike Brumley, the shortstop. Kirk Killingsworth will see his first action at DH in this tournament. Then it's Jose Tolentino at cleanup. Jeff Heron catching. David Denny in left field. And here's the change. Steve LeBay in right field tonight. Mike Trent in center field. And Brian Burroughs will be at third base. Pitcher for Texas will be Calvin Chiraldi when you get a chance to see the Longhorns on the mound. The Razorbacks have taken the field. And we can take a look there at Ed Loopy, the starting pitcher for the Arkansas Razorbacks. He is 2-0 and on the season. Loopy has appeared twice against Texas previously, both times up in Arkansas. Loopy mostly a reliever. Hasn't been that much of a starter for... Uh, Arkansas, but uh, he's rested, so they're going to go with him tonight. The Razorbacks in their seventh Southwest Conference postseason tournament. Taking a look at the Arkansas Razorbacks defensively, the first baseman for Arkansas is Ralph Krause, freshman out of Plano, Texas. The second baseman, well, they're there together. The second baseman is Brett Harrison, a sophomore from Langley, Oklahoma. The shortstop for the Razorbacks is Jim Ward. He is a sophomore from Tulsa. At third base is Mark Berry, a sophomore out of Oxnard, California. The left fielder is Norm Roberts. He's a sophomore from Texarkana. Center fielder is Mike Robinson, a junior from Tulsa. In right field is Scott Lowski, maybe the heart of this ball club, a senior from Columbus, Nebraska. The catcher is Tom Pagnazzi. He's an all-conference selection, a junior out of Tucson, Arizona. And you have seen Ed Loopy, who is taking the mound for the Razorbacks in the championship ball game. Loopy is from Littleton, Colorado. Tall right-hander, two wins, no losses. Earn an average of 4.01, as we said, Bill, mostly a reliever, but he's getting a start tonight in the biggest game of the year. This is it as Texas and Arkansas play because the winner of this one does get the NCAA bid. Bill Bates is the first batter for Texas, stepping in against Ed Loopy, hitting 275 on the season. Here's the pitch. That one rides up high for ball one, and it's one ball and no strikes. Bates pumps, delivers. There's strike call. It's one ball and one strike. Loopy pumps and delivers. Bates is the batter. <laughs> Well, I would think at least for the first two innings, the pitcher would have a decided advantage pitching out of the sunlight into the shadows. Got to be tough for the batters. Here's the wind. The pitch to Bates. Line drive. Left field. Base hit. <laughs> so much for the decided advantage for the pitcher. Bill Bates batting only 100 in the Southwest Conference postseason tournament. There's been a disappointment. It's Bill Bates and the next batter, Mike Brumley. He's only batting 182 in the tournament. Bates at first base with good speed. Texas is the visiting team in the game because under conference rules, the, when you get to this ball game, you go by the number of times the team had been visitor. Texas had been home team twice, visitor once. Arkansas had been home twice, visitor twice. And so the Razorbacks are the home team in this one. Mike Brumley bats now for Texas. He's a switch hitter out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. 
at 269 on the season and is not, as Steve just told you, having a very good tournament at all for Texas. Switch hitter. From the left side against the right-hander, Loopy. Loopy is an American Indian. Pitch to the plate, ball lifted left side and foul, giving chases to third baseman Barry, but he'll not get to it. We should mention also, we've talked about uh, the error in right field last night, three base error, and also Steve LeVay making a misjudge on a fly ball, but perhaps as important were third, called third strikes that Bill Bates and Mike Brumley took with runners in scoring position after Texas was behind last night. Loopy calls timeout and gets a new baseball from home plate umpire Joe Bob Taylor. And as we said, you can really see it here now. Loopy, the pitcher, is on the, in the sun, bright sunlight, the batter in the shadows, and that makes for a, a tough combination for a batter. It is a perfect day for baseball here in Austin. The wind is blowing lightly from first toward third out of the southeast. The runner bluffs. The pitch is down low for a ball. It is one ball and one strike. Bill Bates is a threat to go for Texas. 15 out of 18 this year in stolen bases. Longhorns like to hit and run with Bates and Brumley, but Brumley having problems making contact, as Steve told you a minute ago. 2-1 pitch coming. There goes the runner. The pitch is inside. The throw to second, and Bates has stolen second base. Tom Pagnazzi, the Arkansas catcher, very disgusted with himself. He did a double clutch on that, Bill. I don't know whether he didn't have a good grip or if he thought he didn't have a chance or what, but uh, that was a double clutch on the catcher. And Bates had that all the way. Watch right here. Now, he, Pagnazzi gets up, double clutches, and by then it's too late. I think his shortstop might not have been there, or maybe he was shaded off a little bit from the umpire out there, Chuck Swallow at second base. Whatever, he had to wait a second, and Bates is in in scoring position. It was a ball to Brumley, so the count is two and one. Texas with a go-ahead run at second base. The stretch by Ed Lupe. The bunt is squared and taken as a strike, and it's two balls and two strikes. Very good pitch. That'd be very tough to bunt. That was a ball that dropped right down on the inside corner. Loopy was 5-1 in 1982 for the Razorbacks. Just 2-0 this season. Here's the stretch. Pitch is swung on and chopped foul by Brumley. Count will hold two balls and two strikes. Arkansas comes into tonight's ball game with a record of 43-16. Texas has won 50 ball games. The Longhorns at 51 and 13. Both teams hoping for an NCAA bid. We talked earlier in the telecast about the fact that some of those bids were decided. We'll talk about that as we go on through the evening. Texas and Arkansas, however, haven't gotten one yet. Pitch is swung on and missed as Brumley went for one down at his feet for strike three. And there is one man away. That was not a very good pitch to go after. Mike went fishing and came up with an empty hook. Kirk Killingsworth, the designated hitter, will be the batter. He's a senior out of Plano, Texas. Killingsworth used primarily as a pitcher for Texas. He has been as a hurler in 25 ball games. He has been in a, as a batter in 28 games. So figure that together. Texas has played 64 ball games. Brumley, or Killingsworth has been in most of them. Pitch comes as a strike and it's 0-1. Most amazing statistic about Kirk Killingsworth, in those 28 games, he has 21 hits and has driven in 31 runs. <laughs> Despite a 236 batting average, he has been most productive in the RBI department. He's got good power out to left field. The pitch comes down low for a ball. And that's one ball and one strike. That hit to RBI ratio would be taken by anyone in any division in baseball. Major League on down. There's two doubles, one triple, and three home runs. So if his 21 hits, six of them have been for extra bases. And timeout call now is Mark Berry is going to come out and talk to his pitcher, Loopy. Now, Killingsworth in the series up at Arkansas was on a roll, and he had a home run there that went through the armory across the street about six stories high, it seemed, as he really clobbered the baseball. So there's no question the Razorbacks know of Mr. Killingsworth's potential. We might also add the wind shifted from last night. It's blowing pretty much out to left field right now. Said that a minute ago. It's 340 down the line, and that does get made from that breeze. It blows now as you look at the American flag out over the left center field fence. We pan back in to 
Cliff Gustafson at third base, the Longhorn coach. Pitch to from Loopy, swing and a miss for a strike. And it's one ball and two strikes as Killingsworth is now behind. Bill, you mentioned Kirk as a pitcher, and with Calvin Schiraldi going with just two days rest, I've got to believe we will see Kirk Killingsworth on the mound before this game is over. Gonna get a look here what happens when the ball comes from the sun and into the shade, and you can see what the batter has to fight there. As we've got a marked shadow for, oh, probably another 20 minutes or so. Killingsworth calls time and steps back. It is early evening in Austin as the tournament is ending in the seventh ball game. Two games were played opening day, two the next, two on the third day, including a championship ball game, and then this one is the final one. The pitch is down low for ball two. It's two balls and two strikes. In the seven years of the tournament, this is only the second time that it has gone the distance. And Texas and Arkansas made that trek in 1980. The Longhorns won. Arkansas has been in every tournament, but they have yet to win one. Their chance comes here tonight. Two balls and two strikes to Kirk Killingsworth. Bates down at second base. Texas batting in the top of the first inning. Swing and a miss for strike three, and Killingsworth goes down. And the batter will be Jose Tolentino, the Longhorns' leading RBI man. So after Bates was aboard with a single and stole second, Brumley and Killingsworth have both gone down. And if Texas has a hero in 1983, this is the man, Tolentino, carrying a batting average of 345, 56 runs driven in and nine home runs. He also has 27 doubles and two triples. 78 base hits and 226 at bats for the left-handed batter. Junior out of Mexico City. This stretch by Lupe, the check at second. The pitch is up high for a ball. And it's one ball and no strikes. And that will bring the catcher Pagnazzi out to talk to Lupe. Looked like he might have hung that one up a little high. And Pagnazzi yeah. does not want to see that happen <laughs> again. Tolentino's got good power, and it is a short porch down the right field line here at Dish Falk at 325. The power alleys go to 375 on both sides. The breeze not really a factor for Jose to write. Not blowing much at all now. There is a strike, and it's one ball and one strike to Tolentino. Last night, Jose had a couple of hits against the Razorbacks. Double, that three run double, and then another single. Loopy with a long look. The pitch, ball grounded right side. First baseman's going to take it, tosses to the bag to Loopy, who covers and is there in time to get Tolentino. So Texas opens with a pop and ends with a fizzle in the first inning. There are no runs on one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. We go to the bottom of the first. It is Texas nothing, and Arkansas coming to bat. Steve, earlier in the day, the NCAA Baseball Committee met on a conference call and did some deciding. And, of course, as we mentioned earlier, the thing these teams are playing for is the automatic bid for the NCAA playoffs. The Southwest Conference winner has traditionally gotten an automatic bid. In 1977, they began the conference tournament and decided then that the conference tournament winner would get the bid given to the Southwest Conference. That has been the case. There's also been the stipulation that an at-large bid, if given, would go to the second place team in the tournament if the regular season winner won the tournament. If the regular season winner did not win the tournament, that that team would be eligible for an at-large bid. Texas and Arkansas then have come here to this ball game with an automatic bid at stake and an at-large bid at stake. The Longhorns feel pretty good. Texas at 51 and 13. They've had some big ball games. They feel like they've got a good chance to get an at-large bid. Arkansas, on the other hand, is 43 and 16. If they lose, they'll have 17 defeats. And the baseball committee did not decide to award an either-or bid to Texas or Arkansas, which was a little bit unusual. Folks thought maybe that uh, given the fact that these teams had such a good record in playoff competition before, that they'd go back and do something about that. Well, you also have to look at Arkansas. They could have done very well against uh, Oral Roberts, another big competition. Looking at Calvin Schiraldi. Calvin, of course, 10 and 1 on the year. 
Starting lineup for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Scott Lowski will lead off in right field. Batting second is Brett Harrison. He's the second baseman. Tom Pagnazzi is the catcher. He bats third. Norm Roberts is the left fielder. He's the cleanup hitter. Mike Loggins is the designated hitter. Mark Berry bats in the fifth position. He's the third baseman. Ralph Krause is the first baseman. He is the seventh batter. Berry's batting sixth. Mike Robinson is the eighth batter. He's the center fielder. And Jim Ward, the shortstop, is hitting in the ninth position for the Razorbacks. We talked about Calvin Chiraldi before. Uh, Coach Gustafson would like to get five really good innings out of Calvin tonight with just two days rest. The bell cow of the staff from Austin Westlake. Get five out of him and go to Killer and anybody else. Leading off is Scott Lowski hitting 368. He has driven in 42 runs on the season. The pitch comes as a strike from Calvin Chiraldi, and it's 0-1, and, and that draws some moves from the Texas fans here. It is not unlike Cliff Gustafson to bring his ace back in a situation like this. He did it with Tony Arnold several years ago in the NCAA tournament in an effort to get to the College World Series and did it well. Pitch is fouled back out of play. In fact, a very fine Stanford team was eliminated by Arnold in 1981 to do that. Calvin Chiraldi at 6-3 and 2-10. Junior out of Austin Westlake. Lowski having a pretty good conference tournament. He's batting 3.53 right at this season average. 0-2 pitch coming from Chiraldi is very wide for a ball. And it's one ball to no strikes. With a 1.95 ERA, Chiraldi has the best on the Texas team overall. He's been in 18 games, started 13, and completed eight of them. Gone 101 innings. Has walked 35 and struck out 82 during that time. Right-hander pumps, delivers. That one out of play. And it's one and two to Scott Lowski. Razorback red. Texas dressed in the white uniforms. Arkansas occupying the first base dugout, but they are the home team. Texas home course of course is Dishwalk Field and so because of that Texas is allowed to stay in its regular dressing room which is on the third base side. Pitch comes up high to Lowski. Lowski's got pretty good power Billy. He's got 14 doubles but perhaps a good indication of his all around ability is his seven triples because usually the only difference between a double and triple is the batter's speed. And he's got the wheels. He's also stolen more bases than any other Razorback 40 this year. Ball lifted out of play. And it's right on the lip of the roof and bounces down on the fans. Dishfalk Field will seat about 5,000 folks, and we are beginning to fill up as the tournament game is really drawn. A championship ball game that was really not expected to be, because I think most folks felt that after Texas beat Arkansas on Saturday night, the Longhorns had a pretty good chance at eliminating the Razorback Sunday night. Things did not go so. Ball again, foul back out of play and into the stands. I would think that would have to be in Arkansas's favor when the NCAA does get around to giving out bids in this area. The fact that they have come back so strong in this tournament. They named some at-large selections today. They chose Miami, Pan American, South Carolina, Wichita State, Arizona State, and Tulane. There are also some automatic qualifiers that we'll talk about as we go along. One of the surprises is that Wichita State did not win its tournament. Indiana State came through and won the Missouri Valley. As a matter of fact, Wichita State didn't even finish second. Southern Illinois finished second. Two, two pitch wide from Chiraldi, and it's three and wide, three and two. Solowski's working hard and making Chiraldi throw a bunch of pitches, which is not what Cliff Gustafson wanted to see as he brought his big right-hander back with just two days rest. Hoping to get five. Here's the wind. The pitch from Chiraldi. Ball hit out this time fairly deep to the left side. Going back is Denny. He is at the warning track and makes the catch. see the aluminum bat and that really has made a difference in college baseball is that ball should not have been hit that well but no. when the ball comes off that aluminum bat in contrast to the wood bat it will really jump and he did that time to the opposite field Brett Harrison the second baseman is the batter sophomore out of Langley Oklahoma batting 303 the pitch is up high from Chiraldi and it's one ball or no strikes you want to see a pitcher's nightmare he probably dreams of Mike Schmidt with an aluminum bat that would be a nightmare Pitch is swung on and chopped foul, and it's one ball and one strike. You got to look there just a second ago at the way the college umpires, the young ones, are doing to 
really get into the ball game. You saw Joe Bob Taylor right down behind Jeff Heron and watch him here as he crouches down behind him. He is actually looking over Heron's shoulder. He places his hand right on there. Gets down. Pitch comes down for a ball and it's two balls and one strike. Shirali pumps. Ball lifted out right side. Bates calling at second base. He's underneath it and makes the catch. So there are two away for Arkansas on the bottom of the first. No score. Texas and Arkansas, the championship ball game of the Southwest Conference Baseball Tournament, and you're watching it all on Home Sports Entertainment. I'm Bill Little with Steve Ross here at Dishwalk Field on the campus of the University of Texas. Batter for the Razorbacks is Tom Pagnazzi, the catcher, junior out of Tucson, Arizona, 368 on the year with 50 runs driven in. Pitch, foul back out of play. And it's 0-1. Calvin Chiraldi earned the nickname of the Nibbler. Folks at Omaha last year were telling the Texas people that uh, that really was kind of a misnomer because you think of a nibbler as a guy that throws junk, just kind of picks around the plate a little bit. Shirali throws it hard. Here's the wind, the pitch down low for a ball. Right, it is one ball and one strike. Calvin Shiraldi's stock with the Pro Scouts really went up this year when the radar guns came out. One ball, one strike to Tom Pagnazzi. Chiraldi into the windup. The pitch, ball off the fist, foul and out of play. Pagnazzi's not having a particularly good Southwest Conference tournament. He's only got three hits and 14 at bats, and that's good for a 214 batting average with no runs batted in. Texas played up in Little Rock. He was well over 400 for the Razorbacks. Pitch is hit this time on a one hopper to Brumley, who backhands the ball. Long throw across is in time. Tough play for the shortstop, Mike Brumley. Watch this ball curve down. Bagnazzi waits for it, gets good aluminum on it. Brumley takes a step. That's a tough throw for a shortstop to make and a good catch by Tolentino to get him by step. Brumley's got the good arm. He played center field for the Longhorns last year and was an all-conference selection there. And that throw there gives you one of the reasons that a lot of folks think that Brumley will be a professional prospect. There's Michael Brumley right now. Along with Bill Bates. Two are real good friends. Bates, a freshman, Brumley, a junior. They even copy each other on rolling up their sleeves, I guess. Talking to him there is <laughs> Bill Bethay, the Longhorn assistant coach who has been with Cliff Gustafson since 1969. By the way, on Brumley's shoulder there, that is the centennial mark for the University of Texas celebrating its 100th anniversary, in case you're wondering what that is. Somebody was kidding about last night's miscues at the Longhorns Edge that they should have taken some of the players out and defrocked them of the centennial patch <laughs> in ceremonious order. 100 years, the University of Texas celebrating during 1983. All of that began in early April with a grand celebration. A Rice football game later on in the season will mark the big weekend when a lot of the Texas X's will return to Austin to celebrate 100 years. Take a look at the Arkansas Razorback dugout. They're hoping their season's not over. They feel like they have earned, and justifiably so, yes. because they were 22-9 and nine when Texas left Little Rock. And at this time, they are 43-16. and 16. So if you figure that one out right quick, that is 21-7 and seven since Texas left. But they did that against some of the toughest competition you'd want to play, including three out of four against the final Oral Roberts team. They wound up beating Houston four out of five ball games. And they have now hung a loss on Texas. Jeff Heron will lead it off for the Longhorns here in the top of the second is the Texas catcher. Senior out of Cerrito, Cerritos, California steps in. Pitch from Ed Lupe is a strike call on the outside corner and so on one. Jeff having a pretty good tournament. Three hits and nine at bats for a 333 average. Scored two runs. Aaron at 357 in conference play for Texas. Has good power. 
Here's the wind. The pitch ball hit right side. Good play by the second baseman, but he can't get it. It's a base hit for Jeff Heron. Second inning in a row, Texas has its leadoff runner on, and perhaps we should mention last night in that 5-4 to loss to Arkansas, we've talked about the defensive miscues, but Texas stranded 11 runners on the base pass. And that's an awful lot of runners to leave on quite a win. They've left one in scoring position so far in this game, and the batter now is David Denny, the Longhorn left fielder. Denny with a batting average of 302 on the season. Sophomore out of Humble, Texas. Here's a stretch by Ed Loopy. And the pitch is a strike called, and it's 0 and 1. Shadow's moving rather rapidly now, although we're taking a long time for this. Yeah, the main field is covered, so it is no longer a factor, really, as the lights are on. Ball hit right side, base hit. Heron will make the turn and hold at second base as Lowski bobbles the ball briefly. The throw comes back in, but Jeff Heron is safe at second. David Denny with a second straight hit for Texas. You take a look at David Denny. He has been a guy we were seeing last night. He's a streak hitter who hasn't struck, but every game it seems Denny has had at least a base hit for Texas. Now to Steve LeBay, the center, the right fielder for Texas, who is called upon. It's Tom Pagnazzi is going to call time to check signals because Texas, with nobody out, quite likely to try to move him up. Mike Trent, the center fielder, would follow LeBay. Texas in the lower part of the order. LeBay is the seventh hitter for Texas with a 273 average. He's driven in 44 runs with three home runs. Ed Loopy goes to the belt. The pitch, LeBay squares to Bunt and takes it down low for a ball. Steve LeBay batting only 0.83 in this tournament. He has one hit in 12 at bats. He had pulled his average up to almost 290, but it has slipped back down to 273 now. Here's the stretch. Squares to Bunt. Takes that one for ball two, and it's 2-0. And again, we talked about Texas looking for the combination of hitting and fielding out in right field. LeBay getting his shot tonight. Pitch from Loopy. All three. It's 3 0. Oh. Ed Loopy in 42 and two thirds innings. It walked 17 batters and struck out 22. Texas is a very patient ball club. They are not going to help the pitcher at all. And in this case, in waiting for the sacrifice bunt, LeBay has waited for a strike. Here's the stretch. There's the pitch. That's ball four, and the bases are loaded with nobody out. Steve LeBay at first base. Talked about Texas being patient. That is the 403rd walk for the Texas team against only 240 strikeouts to load up the bases. There's David Denny at second, and now Jeff Heron over at third base. As we take a look at the Texas runners, and that brings Dave Jorn, the assistant coach for Arkansas, out to talk to his pitcher, Ed Loopy. Now, Steve, you talked to Norm Brown earlier in the ball game about his pitching and his depth and what he might have to do in this ball game to try to win it. He said everybody's available with the possible exception of Charlie Corbell. And that included Lester Lancaster, who was so brilliant against Texas in the Sunday night game. We cannot see the bullpen down the right field line that is hidden behind the bleachers. But I would assume that there is business down there as the Razorbacks try to get ready. Somebody here with the bases loaded. Trent will be the better, and Mike Trent making a rare appearance in this tournament as he has been used for defensive purposes. He is batting 298 now on the season, but Trent at one point, in fact, when Texas went to Arkansas in late March, Trent was the leading hitter on the Texas ball club at well over 350. Now down to 298 with 15 runs driven in, but if he wants his job back in center field, he's got a heck of a chance for it right here. The bases are loaded in the top of the second. Texas and Arkansas with no score 
in the championship ball game of the Southwest Conference Tournament. This is game seven. The winner of this one gets an automatic NCAA bid. Here's the stretch by Ed Lupe. Pitch to Trent. Here's a ball, and it's 1-0. Oh. That's five straight, Bill, and maybe one of them has been close. The others haven't even really been close. Lupe had not had control problems in the first, and he had been ahead of the two batters he'd faced got base hits in the second but then he walked LeBay on four pitches it is ball one to Mike Trent here's the stretch the pitch there's a strike call and it's one ball and one strike Trent with good speed out of the left handed batter's box is a tough man to double the Razorbacks however are set at double play depth they would give up a run to try to get out of the inning Brian Burroughs waits in the on deck circle Texas in the eighth spot in the batting order in Mike Trent. There you look at him. The base is jammed. Here's the stretch by Loopy. The pitch. Trent chops it down the first baseline. They're going to come to first base for the only out. First baseman Kraus thought about it. Heron scores the first run of the game. Texas is in front of one to nothing. Well, they had the setup for the force out at home play, but Kraus decided I guess he couldn't get there in time. Jeff Heron at third base, not a speed demon. But Trent gets an RBI the easy way. Two men are in scoring position now for Brian Burroughs with one away as a senior from Gonzalez steps up. Down at second base is LeBay. You see him in the top of your screen. The pitch is up high to Brian Burroughs, and it's 1-0. and Burroughs played second base his first years in Texas, moved to third this season. Been a very consistent player for Cliff Gustafson. 302. He's been over 300 all year. Here's the pitch. There's a strike called, and it's 1-1. One and one. Ed Loopy has been in some trouble in this one. A pair of singles and a walk, and a ground out got a run. Pitch is bunted. They're working the squeeze. The run's going to score. Throw to first. It's in time, but the sacrifice is successful. Classic example of Gus Ball getting runs any way you can. Perfectly executed squeeze bunt by Brian Burroughs, a good contact hitter. Brings in the second run of the game. And it brings up Bill Bates, who's there in a hurry with a runner at third base, Steve LeBay. Here's the pitch. It's up high for a ball. Uh, Arkansas simply was not expecting this. He has no choice but to go to first. Perfect bunt just to the third base side of the pitcher, and he had to go to first. Stretch by Loopy in the pitch to Bates. Here's ball two, and it's 2-0. and oh. Texas was still a man in scoring position. The Longhorns have scored two here in the top of the second inning. Bates singled his first time up. Texas now with three hits off Ed Loopy. He squares to bunt as Bates and takes that one all the way for a strike. So it's two balls and one strike. Well, with two out, Arkansas wasn't quite buying that. baseman anticipating that he might however and there's a strike to Bill Bates two balls and two strikes Bates has played most of this season with an injured left hand it's going to require some surgery after the season is over and what you call a gamekeeper's thumb pitch to the plate lifted left side that's going to drop for a base hit and Bates is driven in a run Going for two and getting there. Here's a little dinker to the opposite field. The ball high, dropping down. Bates goes with it, takes it to short left center. Using good speed, the, right, the center fielder moving away from the play. 
Bates taking advantage of that, using his speed to get there in time for a double and put himself in scoring position. It is three to nothing as Steve LeBay has come in on the RBI double by Bill Bates that he just used the good wheels to stretch into an extra base hit. And it brings up Mike Brumley. Four hits now off of Ed Loopy. Mike Brumley struck out his first time. Arkansas has somebody watching that bullpen very carefully. Evidently, the man's not ready. They would make a move probably by now. Loopy goes to the belt. The pitch to Brumley rides high for a ball, and it's one ball and no strikes. Bill Bates is two for two in the ball game. A bluff behind the runner and back in time is Bates. Pitch coming to Brumley. Loopy at the belt delivers. Right call. One ball, one strike. But you hear Joe Bob Taylor with a strike call from behind home plate. Taylor's a veteran umpire. He has called in five of the seven Southwest Conference baseball tournaments. He's called the NCAA playoffs. He's from the Dallas area. Stretched by Loopy. The pitch to Brumley rides high for ball two. It's two and one. I feel playing Brum Brumley straight away, medium deep. He has not made good contact. Pitch that time he did. Line drive, center field, one hopper. Bates is going to try to score. Here comes the throw to the plate. He slides. He's safe. Runner goes to second. This is a run built on speed. He hit a single that he stretched into a double. This is a shallow single to center field. Center fielder Robinson makes an excellent throw. Bates uses his wheels, gets just underneath the tag by Pagnazzi, and Bill Bates got two extra bases out of those two singles. He has scored run number four for Texas, and that's going to bring Norm DeBryan out as you take a look at Mike Brumley, who really got contact with that one. A one-hop single hit on a line to center field, and when Bates went home, Brumley went to second base. So the Longhorns with two out and still a man in scoring position. You just can't overemphasize it in almost any team sport I know. Speed kills. It can just, it can give you so many dimensions. And that's a classic example from Bill Bates of what speed can do for you. Taking a look at Norm DeBryan, who has made that trip to the mound that he knew he would have to. And guess who it is? It is Lester Lancaster. Lester Lancaster right away. As Lancaster is pitching in his fourth Southwest Conference tournament ball game. He pitched in a game on Friday, a game on Saturday, and then last night, on Sunday night, he pitched against the Longhorns. And now is on here. Lester Lancaster in those four games, Bill, has pitched nine innings. He's only given up seven hits, two runs, none of them earned. So he has a 0.00 earn run average in this tournament. He's won one game, lost one, he's got a save. He has eight strikeouts in his nine innings. He pitched six and two-thirds innings less than 24 hours ago. And he's on now in relief to try to close the door. Kirk Killingsworth is the batter for Texas. The Longhorns have scored four runs, and two of those have come after two were away. Jeff Heron led off the inning with a single. David Denny singled. Steve LeBay walked to load the bases. Mike Trent had a ground out to score a run. Burroughs squeezed Bunted to drive in another. And then Bates with a double. And now Brumley has singled in Bates, and he is at second base after taking the extra base on the throw home. Kirk Killingsworth is 0 for 1. He struck out in the first inning. 
Bases now Lester Lancaster. The top of the second, Texas leading Arkansas four to nothing. Razorbacks came from four down last night to win five to four over Texas. Here's the stretch. Pitch ball lifted to center field. Coming in. Underneath it is the center fielder, and the inning is over. But Texas has done some damage. The Longhorns score four runs. They did it with four base hits. There were no errors, and there was one man left on base. We go to the bottom of the second. It is Texas four and Arkansas nothing in the Southwest Conference Tournament Championship ball game, game seven of the conference tournament. Now might be a good time, Bill, just to point out what happened last night. Texas cruising along in the sixth inning with a four to nothing lead. The bottom fell out in a hurry. Roger Clemens, who pitched an excellent baseball game for Texas, saw five runs scored by Arkansas in that sixth inning. They got three hits, one of them a triple, and there was that three base error. So Arkansas has the ability to put points on the scoreboard in a hurry. Razorbacks have scored this season 412 runs in 59 ball games, which figures out to not far from seven runs a game. So that gives you some kind of idea of the scoring potential of this bunch. As you can see, Dishbalk Field, it's filling up in a hurry. They're getting an outstanding crowd tonight for a game that many people thought probably would not be played. Now, reserve seats to this game are $4, so you figure that if we get 12,000 bucks out of this, the conference tournament's made some more money, and there's they, a young fan <laughs> coming in. And they've got a lot more than 3,000 people here tonight. This is closing in on 4,500. We're going up in age brackets here. <laughs> First up the race back to the bottom of the second inning, number 15, left fielder, Norm Roberts. Norm Roberts is going to lead it off for Arkansas against Chiraldi in the first pitch of the second inning. Is a ball, it's one ball and no strikes. Southwest Conference Baseball Tournament, just one of the events brought to you on home sports entertainment that include a lot of college events. Pitch coming, ball is foul back onto the screen, and it's one ball and one strike. Roberts is a sophomore from Texarkana, and he's had a good tournament, Steve. Very good tournament. He's batting 429, six hits, 14 at bats, and he's got four runs batted in. Hits with power. He's had a home run in the tournament. And a triple. Pitch is hit on the fist, back to the shortstop Rumley. His throw to first base is in time, and Roberts is down. So there's one man out. Here in the bottom of the second inning. Batter now is Mike Loggins, the designated hitter. He is just a freshman out of Crossett, Arkansas. He's a switch hitter. Bats from the left side against the right-hander, Calvin Ciraldi. We mentioned last night, this is a very young Arkansas baseball team. Norton DeBrine, no matter what happens this year, has to feel pretty good about next year. He's got two freshmen. He's just got one sophomore, one senior in the lineup yeah. tonight. Pitches bunted down the first baseline, but too hard. Tolentino to the bag. They're two away. We talked about how balanced this tournament is. Arkansas, a lot of people coming back. Rice, the first team to leave this tournament. Uh, a lot of people coming back next year, including most of their pitchers, unless a couple of them get drafted. Uh, it's going to be a strong conference again next year. Batter is Mark Berry. The third baseman from Oxnard, California. He is a sophomore for the Razorbacks. Pitch from Chiraldi. Rides high for a ball, and it's one ball and no strikes. You know, the thing about it, as you look at the teams coming into this tournament, Steve, everybody thought that this thing was going to go seven games. Then after Texas won the first two, I think lots of folks are surprised that we're in game seven. Yeah. But in retrospect, it's really not a surprise at all. There is ball two, two balls and no strikes. Perhaps... The way the Longhorns dropped the ball game last night surprised a lot of folks because it was uncharacteristic of Texas teams to have such a misplay figure. But then Arkansas had lost on Saturday night in similar fashion. There's a strike to Mark Berry, and it's two balls and one strike. Well, of the six previous games, we had one that you might call a blowout. Texas went over Arkansas. Uh, but otherwise, they've been one or two run ball games. 2-1 pitch rides high for ball three, and it's three balls and one strike. Inside fastball from Chiraldi tails in to the 
batter Mark Berry and Calvin Chiraldi has walked his first man. So with two away, the batter will be Ralph Kraus, the first baseman. Chiraldi has lost only one ball game this year, and that one was a heartbreaker. That one came on a windy day against TCU here at Dishbalk Field, as you see Kraus stepping in. Chiraldi throws to first base. He gave up one hit. He had two outs in the bottom, in the top of the seventh inning in a seven-inning ball game. Nobody on base, and a TCU player hit a solo home run to win one to nothing. Texas did not score in the bottom of the seventh. We need to point out as well that home run was tremendously windated. The wind was quite strong that day, blowing straight out where he hit it. When he, the batter hit the ball, everybody thought it was a routine fly, but the wind got a hold of it, and it was gone. Carry to the opposite field and out of the ballpark. 1-0 pitch on the way to Kraus is a strike call, and it's one ball and one strike. And I don't think that you can ever have Calvin Chiraldi in any kind of ball game that you don't have to discuss last year in the College World Series and the happenings there. Ball popped up and out of play, and it's one ball and two strikes. Chiraldi was involved in one of the most frightening plays in College World Series history. Is he was the pitcher, delivered a pitch that came inside and did not break a hard slider that hit Kevin Pinner of Wichita just below the batting helmet. Pinner was down for 15 minutes. Pitches outside for ball two, and it's two and two. I don't think there's a worse sound in sports than, uh, than a batter being hit by a baseball. It was really a sickening thud, and they thought for a while that Pinner might not live. They thought he might not have his sight. He is leading the team in hitting, so things have gone well for him as they have for Chiraldi. There is ball three and it's a full count three balls and two strikes to Ralph Kraus. But Chiraldi had a battle in the summer to try to overcome that because you can't have that kind of thing happen without it being pretty much a shock to you throw to first base and the runners back two out in the bottom of the second Texas leading Arkansas by a score of four to nothing game seven Southwest Conference baseball tournament this is the championship ball game throw to first by Chiraldi and the runners back now you got to look there at Chiraldi's quick move because he has really got a good one for a right-hander. And Barry is going to have to be careful. Here's the stretch. Runners going. Line drive. Left field. Foul ball. Full count remains. With two out, Barry is on the move with the full count on the batter, Kraus. Kraus, the beneficiary of uh, a misplay last night that turned out to be a triple that drove in the winning run for the University of Arkansas in the sixth inning. He sent a, a, a liner into left center field, the opposite field. Steve LeBay overran a little bit, went over his head, and the winning run came in. It's uh, easy to sit in a broadcast booth yeah. or in a home living room and say well the guy should have done that differently but an outfielder has got to give a little on a ball hit like that you got to know when to go back and when to cut across pitch coming from Chiraldi runners moving popped up again we'll do it again full count remains for Ralph Krauss but on a ball hit in the gap like that the outfielder has the choice of giving ground and trying to go back and catch it or if it He's trying to cut it off to keep it from getting in the gap and hold him to a, a single or so. He's got to come straight across. And when you get caught in no man's land, my dad used to tell me that in tennis. When you get caught between the front line and the back line, you were in no man's land. You were in trouble. And that's what happened to the Texas outfield last night on a couple of occasions. They went back and couldn't get back in. Here's the stretch pitch ball this time fouled again. And it's still three and two. Perhaps the most important part of this battle going on right now between Chiraldi and Krause is the amount of pitches that Calvin Chiraldi is having to throw with two days rest. It is only the second inning, but Chiraldi has had to throw a bunch. Scott Lowski in the first inning had a full count, fouled off a whole bunch of pitches. Pitched to Krause, fouled again. That went off Jeff, I think. I think Jeff Heron might have his bell rung just a little bit. Now and kind of skidded back to the screen. Taking a look at Heron. 
He's been quite a defensive player for Texas as well as an offensive player. Batted 315 last year for the Longhorns. The only guy I know that could grow, grow a beard overnight. I mean, that guy is... There's the runner at first base, Mark Berry. Make it look here at Chiraldi's move over, although Berry does not have a big lead at all. There he's moving. The pitch comes down low for ball four, and he walked him, and Chiraldi is not very happy at the second walk issued. It puts runners at first and second. It brings up Mike Robinson, the center fielder, junior from Tulsa. He's got pretty good power. Robinson has hit a home run in this tournament. Uh, had a two-run homer in the first game against Houston. Right-handed batter with two men aboard. Here's the stretch by Chiraldi. The pitch is wide for a ball. He's one ball and no strikes. Robinson, as a matter of fact, the team leader for the University of Arkansas with home runs. He has six for the entire season. Twelve doubles and four triples. Stretch by Chiraldi. The pitch, breaking pitch, catches the corner. And it's one ball and one strike. Chiraldi got a good hard slider, fastball. Looked like there he came with a curveball, yeah. maybe. <clears throat> Bluff of the runner at second. The pitch wide for ball two. And it's two balls and one strike to Mike Robinson. Robinson leads the ball club in home runs, as Steve said. He has driven in 97. Let me change that. He has driven in 38 runs. Hits that one to the shortstop. Brumley, who bobbles the baseball, and everybody will be safe. Now they got the runner pinned between first, between third and home. Heron with the ball, tosses back, put out is there. It will be scored as an error on Brumley to allow Robinson to reach first base. But the runner, Mark Berry, had turned too far. Now, Brumley, this seems to be a routine out. He looks to second a little bit too soon, bobbles it. Now, watch Berry. You'll go right off your screen. He rounds way too far. Brumley, although bobbling it, had not lost control, goes over to Burroughs, and they've got him in a rundown. Now, Heron does the smart thing. He runs him back, then goes to Burroughs for the tag. So Texas gets out of the inning. It is an error on Brumley the second inning ends with no runs on no hits there was one Texas era there were two men left on base we have played taking their time out there for us. We go to the top of the third inning. Jose Tolentino, Jeff Heron, and David Denny will come up for Texas against Lester Lancaster, who is on the mound for Arkansas in relief of Ed Lupe. And the first man Lancaster will face will be Jose Tolentino, Texas first baseman. He grounded out his first trip to the plate. Lancaster delivers, and the pitch rides high for a ball, and it's one ball and no strikes. One phone call. Lassiter, rated R. Now playing at a theater near you. Please check newspaper. Arms. There's a strike, and it's one ball and one strike. Tolentino, a free agent as far as the baseball teams are concerned. Which is outside for ball two. He is a junior and has, of course, one more year at Texas that he can return to. But as a native of Mexico, he is also eligible to 
be signed by any of the professional teams. He doesn't have to be drafted to get into pro ball. There is ball three, and it's three balls and one strike. I like that contradiction of terms, Bill. He may be a free agent, but he will be anything but free to any team that signs him. Goes to the highest bidder, and that uh, puts him in a good situation because he's had a super year at Texas. 3-1 pitch on the way to Tolentino. Strike called. It's three balls and two strikes. The man kind of paws around up there. We've talked about his batting performance which has been amazingly consistent all year long he's been a, a very consistent fielding first baseman as well good target over there make some nice catches here's the one the pitch foul back on the screen it is still three balls and two strikes now, Tolentino is the only player Texas has who's played in all 64 games and he's made only six errors in those 64 games Pitches hit left side, lining and dropping for a base hit. Well, that makes him one for two in this game for a 500 batting average, and that is exactly what he came in this conference tournament. He had had six hits and 12 at-bats before this game, easily leading the conference in, uh, tournament in batting average with 500 and also leading in RBIs with five. Getting a look at Jose Tolentino there. Jeff Aaron's going to be the batter. Kirk Bowles of the Austin American Statesman wrote a story earlier in the year in which he described Tolentino as tall, dark, and handsome. That drew some rays from Raul Alegre, the Texas football <laughs> kicker who's also from Mexico. And what was it he came back with? I am short. Short, dark. <laughs> short, dark, and <laughs> handsome. <laughs> Jeff Aaron from the right side. Here's the pitch, and that one hit him. Aaron now, is hit for the fifth time on the year. Lancaster's complaining, I think, a little bit because he thought Heron didn't get out of the way like he might have been able to, but uh, Jeff takes one for the team. That is the seventh time, not the fifth time, that Heron has been hit. Last year, he was hit nine times. He is not afraid to turn into a pitch. He crowds the plate. And he has now put two people aboard for David Denny, the Texas left fielder. Well, we saw the strategy from Cliff Gustafson earlier in the game with two on like this to try to bunt him up. And Arkansas anticipating the same thing as the first baseman. Krause is right on the line at the sliding pit. He is not, however, charging. Here's the stretch. The pitch comes up high to David Denny for ball one, and it's one ball and no strikes. Razorbacks not anticipating a Texas bunt as much as you'd think they would be. No. Third baseman, in fact, is racked back a little behind third base. It would be up to Lancaster to field anything as the third baseman would try to have the play on the lead runner. Here's the stretch pitch to Denny. That is high also. Two balls and no strikes. Lancaster has been in 28 ball games for the Razorbacks. Takes a strike, this David Denny, and it's two balls and one strike. Four to nothing. Texas leads Arkansas, the top of the third in the championship ball game of the conference tournament. This is the seventh game. This is it. The winner of this one gets an NCAA bid automatically, and the loser hopes to get an at large selection. Lester Lancaster to the belt. They bluff the runner. The butt is off the bat as Denny had to use it to protect himself. The pitch came right at his head. Simply a matter of self-preservation that time, but it goes up on the scoreboard as a strike. Two balls and two strikes as Denny had no choice as he had squared the bunt. And the pitch was inside and right at him. Two pitch coming. Denny lifts the fly ball to left field. It's a base hit. They'll hold the runner at third, and the bases are loaded with nobody out for Texas. The second hit of the ball game for David Denny. Tolentino to third. Heron to second. Texas threatens again. As you look at Jose Tolentino, there's Jeff Heron. 
we might be That's beginning to see. Yeah, we might be beginning to see, Bill, what we talked about in terms of pitching depth or perhaps lack of it for Arkansas. And here this seventh game, Lancaster has worked an awful lot, especially in the last 24 hours. You can watch him here. That ball is right at Danny's midsection. Curve ball over the middle of the plate that he takes to left field. Just kind of hung up there for yep. him. Steve LeBay walked in the second inning and scored a run. He's up now with the bases loaded. Here's the stretch from Lancaster. The pitch is a strike call and it's 0 1. Texas now in the lower part of its order. LeBay is the seventh man for the Longhorns. Four to nothing, Texas. In the top of the third. Here's the stretch. Pitch is wide for a ball. It's one ball and one strike. Lancaster has been in relief in now 22 ball games for Arkansas. He's been in 27 games prior to this. He had started only six. The crowd coming to life, exhorting the Texas Chargers. Texas in the process of trying to blow it open. If they can get some here, have a big inning out of this one to go with the four runs they already have. They'll give Calvin Ciraldi a pretty good leg up on the Razorbacks. 1-1, one, one, pitch is high for ball two, and it's two balls in one strike. Steve LeBay started the season as the Longhorns' leading RBI man. Slumped a little, as I said, but Going into the tournament, he pulled back up a bit. Been hitting the ball well in practice. Here's the pitch. Ball hit out right side. It might bring the run, though Tolentino is not fast. Lowski with the catch. They bluff the runner. They send the runner. The throw is up the line, and Tolentino will score. It is five to nothing. A sacrifice fly for Steve LeBay. With all of that, Jeff Heron has moved over to third base. Not a particularly good throw by Lowski. LeBay takes that to the opposite field, as you said, Bill. Tolentino, not exactly a speed merchant. Held up just a little bit. Now, the throw is way up the line. And if you'll notice, Tolentino is not there yet when the ball gets there. So a, a throw maybe on the plate might have gotten him. It is five to nothing, Texas. Mike Trent, the center fielder, will be the batter. As Cliff Gustafson, that's the thing about college baseball today and that the coaches do such a good job of scouting, recruiting, studying. They know so much about the other teams as they do their own teams. It's not just a matter of get off the bus and go play a new bunch. Gustafson <laughs> knows Lowski. He knew what he could do, and he was challenging him. Pitch to Mike Trent. Rides high for a ball, and it's one ball and no strikes. College game has improved tremendously over the last 15 years and in the Southwest Conference that growth has had a lot to do with the allowance of more games to be played. 1 0 pitch coming. There's a strike call one ball and one strike. We talked about that the other night yeah. and they have expanded the schedule. But you look at the at-large selections already named of the NCAAs, Pan American, Miami, South Carolina, Wichita, Arizona State, you'll find those teams have already played well over 60 ball games, and some probably more than 70. 1-1 one, one pitch coming is wide for a ball, and it's two balls and one strike to Mike Trent. College is in many ways becoming a farm system for the professionals as well as producing the student athlete which is what yes. you'll find most folks in college athletics like to talk about pitch to Mike Trent rides very high as he squared to bunt it's three and one the squeeze was not on if it was it was not a suicide squeeze perhaps a safety squeeze that had Trent gotten the butt down the Longhorns would have had a chance to bring Heron and send David Denny over to second base. There is one man out. Texas in the top of the third inning leads Arkansas five to nothing. Calvin Chiraldi for the Longhorns has pitched very, very well so far. Lester Lancaster is the second pitcher for Arkansas. Pitch to Mike Trent is too high for ball four. And Texas again is low to the bases. 
loaded the bases for a fellow who may be the ninth man in the batting order, number two, Brian Burroughs, but a good contact hitter, as we said, and he's batting 302 on the year. Burroughs has driven in 32 runs, 33, including one in this ball game on a sacrifice bunt. And that is going to bring Dave Jorn, the pitching coach, out for the Arkansas Razorbacks to talk to Lester Lancaster. Lancaster last night worked six and two thirds innings. That was in the first championship game, which Arkansas won five to four. That was game six of the tournament. This is game seven, and this is all of it. It's a double elimination tournament. Hence, the seventh game was forced by the Razorbacks' victory over Texas. Texas had gone into last night's action at 2-0, and and the Longhorns won it. It would have been over, and now the discussion ends as Joe Bob Taylor goes out to break it up. Taylor out with that notepad. Now, he is marking the number of visits that a coach has out there. There is a rule in college baseball that after you have made a certain number of visits in a game, and you wind up having to take a pitcher out if you go to the mound at all. Here's the wind. The pitch comes high for a ball. And it's one ball and no strikes. You can't have unlimited trips. College folks very interested in speeding up the ball game as They've got several speed up rules. Not all of them, however, are employed in tournament competition. 1-0 mm. pitch coming is down low. It's 2-0. Bill, you and I can talk about that. We did a seven-inning ball game at Texas A&M earlier this year that ran three hours and eight minutes. Well, this one right here has been going for an hour <laughs> ten, and we're just in the third. <laughs> Base is loaded with no with one out. The pitch to Burroughs is a strike, and it's two and one. When you get to game seven, sometimes it winds up being a test of endurance, and obviously that's what's happened to Arkansas so far. Here's the pitch. It's down low for ball three. If you happen to notice on Lester Lancaster's baseball cap will look like little red dots. Those are tiny Razorbacks, decals given out for achievements. You usually see those on football helmets, not on baseball helmets, but there they are on Lester Lancaster. And as I said a minute ago, he has been in 28 ball games for the Razorbacks. Pitch to the plate, ball four. He walked in, and Texas has one more run. Another RBI for Brian Burroughs. As Heron comes home. It is a six to nothing ball game and that's going to do it for Lester Lancaster as Norm DeBryan is going to go out and take his reliever out. Fifty nine games for Arkansas this season now 60 ball games and Lester Lancaster has pitched in 28 of those ball games. Texas has a similar situation on its ball club and that Kirk Killingsworth, its spine reliever, has been in 25 ball games of the 64 that the Longhorns have played. Now there have been some duplications. As you look at Norm DeBryan out there, number 23, with his back to us, he has done a tremendous job at the University of Arkansas. DeBryan took over the head job at Arkansas in the early 70s and was there when Arkansas became a Southwest Conference competitor. The Razorbacks joined the conference in baseball competition in 1974. They had been to the NCAA tournament the year before in 73, and the first tournament played in Arlington. And DeBryan led his team to the first Southwest Conference tournament in 1977. And a new pitcher on for the Razorbacks. Is John Junior Miller, who is a sophomore, so uh, <laughs> he is making his second appearance. He is one and one with a 4.66 earned run average. Well, maybe he didn't come he earlier. Did. I he thought did. he pitched in one he of the pitched. earlier ball games. Junior Miller has been in 19 and a third innings. As a matter of fact, he pitched against Texas. He may not have gotten any outs, though. That was when Texas won 9-2. to two. 
See if I can. Who, he has walked 10 and struck out 13. We're going to take a look here at Junior Miller as he is taking his warm up tosses. Got his body a little ahead of his arm. I think they'd a little bit rather have it a little tighter together there. Comes in facing a bases loaded situation. His team already down by six runs, and we're just at the top of the third. He's got a downer, one of those pitches that drops when it comes off a table. He is from Owasso, Oklahoma. Scott Tabor at Arkansas threw that same kind of pitch. It's much like the knuckle curve that Bert Hooten threw at Texas. And that has been his very strong out pitch. The bases are loaded now as he faces Bill Bates, who is two for two for Texas. He's driven in a run. Texas six, Arkansas nothing in the top of the third inning. Longhorns with the bases loaded, threatening for more with one out. Pitch is wide for ball one. It's one ball and no strikes. John Miller went to Claremore Junior College in Oklahoma. Is from Owasso, Oklahoma. Pitch is outside for ball two. And it's two balls and no strikes. <clears throat> Texas with six runs on seven hits in an era. Arkansas with no runs on no hits of Calvin Chiroli in an era, but they have just batted twice. Pitch comes as a strike as Bill Bates was taken all the way. And it's two balls and one strike. We talked about Calvin Chiraldi having to use a lot of pitches in the first two innings, Bill, but he's had a long rest in each one of these innings. He could take a nap <laughs> between this one. <laughs> the stretch and the pitch just misses. Well, it dropped, but uh, Mr. Taylor says it dropped inside. John Miller's going to want Taylor to look at that one again with him. <laughs> Three and one to Bill Bates. Again, the bases are loaded. Ball four means another run. The stretch, the pitch, strike call. Nice one for a full count. Three balls and two strikes. <clears throat> Just down low for ball four. He walked him. It is a seven to nothing ball game. Bates gets his second RBI of the game. And the batter is Mike Brumley. Another prime example of what we call Gus Ball, getting a run any way you can. The University of Texas batter is very disciplined, very used to making the pitchers throw good pitches that sounds simple but sometimes in college ball it's a difficult thing to do. Brumley is one for two had a solid single in the second inning to drive in a run struck out in the first. Here's the stretch the pitch there's a strike and a nice one it's 0 and 1. to the belt pitches Bromley chops it foul and it's 0 and 2 Texas with just one out here in the top of the third and leading Arkansas seven to nothing Longhorns got four in the second three here in the third and not showing any indication of being through as they roll up to the top of the order here Bromley's the two hitter for Texas John Miller trying to slam the door Pitch to Brumley, lifted foul down the left field line, just out of play. It is a helpless feeling that the Arkansas fielders are looking at right now. They have seen their pitcher in this inning walk. 
three men. Hit a batter. There have only been two Texas base hits in this. Kind of situation where the fielder says, throw it across and let him hit. We'll get him out. Just let him hit. Miller is ahead of Brumley right now at 0 and 2. Stretch by Miller. The pitch way high for a ball. And it's one ball and two strikes. Pitch to Brumley is high for ball two, and it's two balls and two strikes. Last two pitches, classic examples of a drop pitch that didn't drop. <laughs> Started high and stayed up there. Well, he jumped ahead, 0-2, trying to get Brumley to chase. Here's the stretch. Pitch, ball three. It's three and two. Miller's in trouble. He has worked it back to a full count. Again, the bases are loaded. Texas has already scored three here in the third. And Miller's got to produce. Here's the stretch. There's the pitch. Down low. He walked him. Another run comes in. It is eight to nothing. Texas, as Mike Brumley has drawn the fourth consecutive base on balls for the Longhorns. That will bring Norm DeBryan out with the hook for John Miller. Texas now with eight runs on seven hits and one error. But in this inning, Longhorns have used the base on balls. Tolentino led with a single as we get a look at the new pitcher coming in for the Razorbacks. I think that might be Fred Faust. It's hard to tell that's 50, 53, or Dennis Shanks. Dennis Shanks, all right. Dennis Shanks is a 6'2", 175-pound freshman from Carthage, Missouri. He is 1-0 on the year. He's been in three games, started one game, only... He's only pitched seven and two-thirds innings. He has given up 11 hits in those seven and two-thirds innings. Stru uh, struck out three and walked four. Has an earned run average of 7.04. Well, he needs to close the door. If Arkansas is to get an NCAA bid as an at-large selection from this tournament, they need to show some respectability. I think the yeah. fact that they force this seventh game is going to help them. But if Texas blows them completely out of the tub, that's one of the things that the NCAA baseball committee is going to look at when they go about the business of making selections. So we need to take a look here and see if Mr. Shanks can shut it down a little bit. Right-hander on here. Dennis Shanks is, as I said, from Carthage, Missouri, led his high school team to the semifinals of the Missouri State High School Tournament. He was 10-1 and one with three no-hitters as a senior in high school. He was a three-sport letterman was all conferences a pitcher and an outfielder. Shanks has been used exclusively as a pitcher for the Razorbacks, however. He's not played in the outfield at all. Batter for Texas is Kirk Killingsworth. He's the ninth man to come to the plate for the Longhorns. And again, still, there is only one man away. Texas eight, Arkansas nothing. We're in the top of the third inning. The Southwest Conference Baseball Tournament. Killingsworth is 0 for 2. He struck out, fly to center field. Pitch is chopped down the third baseline. They're going to come home for one and go back to nowhere. He held the baseball. Started to go to first. Elected better of it. They got the force play to get the lead runner Burroughs out 5 2 if you're scoring. The bases, however, remain loaded for Jose Tolentino, who started all of this with an opposite field single as he is the 10th man to come up for Texas here. Not exactly the man you would like to see at the plate with two out if you're a freshman pitcher.
Texas by eight runs is eight to nothing. As this half inning has gone on a very long time. Here's the stretch. The pitch is wide for a ball. It's one ball, no strikes to Jose Tolentino. Dennis Shanks in his seven and two thirds innings walked four, struck out three, but he's pitched a little. Really, you've not had a chance to get a statistical bearing on what the young man can do. Throw back to second and a scrambling play with the shortstop as it almost got away from it. Ward made a nice play there. To save that from going into center field. Shanks really getting a good opportunity here. He's not under the kind of pressure you are when it's a real tight ball game, and yet he is under pressure because he's here before a very large crowd in a championship ball game, and this team's a long way away. Pitches down low for ball two, but he has a chance to prove something. If he can do some performing and the Razorbacks do get an at-large bid, then he'll have a chance down the road maybe to get in when the water is a lot hotter. Right now, Texas is in front at eight to nothing. Stretch by Shanks. The pitch to Tolentino is ball three, and it's three balls and no strikes. Where have we seen this before? Just a couple of minutes ago. I think I told you a while back there's no place to put this guy. <laughs> Story is getting old. Texas had walked in four runs. Here's the stretch by the freshman. Pitch to Tolentino. There's a strike. And it's three and one. That would be a pretty esoteric statistic, Bill, but I wonder what the conference record is for most consecutive runs walked in in a row. <laughs> I don't know, but I'd sure hate to be a part of it. Either here or down there. Here's the stretch. The pitch to Tolentino. There's a strike. Yeah. Full count. Two out. The runners are going to be moving. You've got Bates at third. Brumley at second, Killingsworth at first base, good speed at first, or at uh, third and second. Shanks to the belt. The pitch popped up back on the screen. Tolentino swung in one that was up. The count remains full to the Longhorn cleanup hitter. Shanks has taken a bunch of time. Here's the stretch. The pitch, that one too is up. Tolentino sends it left side and deep. It is gone. A grand slam homer for Tolentino. one way to clear the bases. Jose Tolentino is 10th home run of the year and the crowd right there asking him to come out and take a bow. Chanting Jose, Jose. Steps out and gives the crowd a tip of his cap. Tolentino did not walk. <laughs> he took it to the opposite field, but took it out. And Jeff Heron is the batter. If Jose Tolentino isn't the most valuable player in this Southwest Conference tournament, I just don't know. Now that 
was his eighth hit in 15 at bats, and he now has nine runs batted in in the, in the four games for Texas. It is 12 to nothing, Texas over Arkansas in the top of the third inning. It is one and one to Jeff Heron now as he bats for the Longhorns here in the third. Freshman Dennis Shanks, line drive by Heron as a base hit to the left side. That is the ninth hit for the Texas batters. Heron was the 11th man. David Denny will be the 12th man to come up for Texas. And Arkansas has got to feel that we have waited 24 hours for this. The Razorbacks beat the Longhorns last night. And now as Denny comes up, Calvin Chiraldi is out playing catch with Roger Clemens. I know we've been going for well over 30 minutes yes. in this half inning. And you're going to need a calculator if you're keeping the score to get all this down. Denny is two for two, and he takes the first pitch up high. There's Calvin Chiraldi loosening up. He's got to do something over there. He is not allowed to hit in the two innings that he has worked. 1-0 pitch comes. Denny sends a fly ball to center field. Coming in and underneath it, the center fielder makes the catch, and the inning is finally over. But the Longhorns have scored eight runs. They did it with five base hits. There were no Arkansas errors, and there was one man left on base. We go to the bottom of the third. It is Texas 12 and Arkansas nothing. This telecast is authorized under rights granted to home sports entertainment and is intended for the solely for the non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, written descriptions, and accounts of the game without the express written consent of home sports entertainment is strictly prohibited. The announcers for this event are selected and employed by Home Sports Entertainment. We are in the middle of the third, and Texas has jumped ahead by 12 to nothing. About 45 minutes ago, Bill, at the top of this inning when we started to talk, you mentioned about college baseball now getting to the level where it's a farm club now for the major leagues, and most college coaches will tell you the top flight college teams are the equivalent of double-A minor league ball, that you could put Texas or Arkansas or... Southern Cal in the Texas League, and they would do well except for one area, and that is pitching depth. Coach Gustafson has said that he thought he could play even with those teams until they got to the third or fourth game in a three or four game series when the pitching would tell. I think the pitching just told for <laughs> Arkansas. <laughs> in the top of the third, the Razorbacks really ran into problems, and the pitching, uh, again, you see what Texas long, long <laughs> discipline has done because there were so many walks, and then finally, uh, when it came down to it, the challenge that was faced by the young freshman Dennis Shanks and Tolentino matched him with the, the Grand Slam homer that electrified the crowd and really has made it a long uphill climb for Arkansas as Jim Ward, the shortstop, leads off against Calvin Chiraldi, who's into the windup and pitches. It is up high for one ball and no strikes. Well, Chiraldi now can work on that no-hitter. He's in the second inning with it. <laughs> it is just the third, but here's a fellow who lost one back down the ray. He lost the ball game when he gave up the one hit. This time, he's fairly assured that one hit is not going to hurt him much. It is one and one to Jim Ward, the sixth, the ninth man in the order. He's the shortstop for Arkansas, making his first appearance against Giraldi. First appearance against Giraldi in this game. This game is an hour and a half old. One ball and two strikes to Jim Ward. Maybe Calvin can become the first fellow to throw a no-hitter over two days. <laughs> one ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Strike three call. He blew that one right by him. It is the first strikeout for Chiraldi. And we go to the top of the third inning. And Scott Lowski, the right fielder. Southwest Conference Tournament, you have seen two ball games. One was the first championship game. Arkansas won that one in a five to four close one. Texas leads in this one in the bottom of the third inning. It is 12 to nothing. Scott Lowski is 0 for 1. Pitch comes 
down low for a ball and it's one ball and no strikes. It's just a difference in the number of games that you played. Arkansas has had to play five games and they have had to play in the last 36 hours three ball games. There is a ball and it's two balls and no strikes to Scott Lowski. Texas on the other hand the Longhorns won the first night won the second night played last night and they're back here playing their second ball game. Which is a strike call and it's two and one and really because of the rain delay I guess we started at three o'clock on Sunday. That's right. So you're actually talking more than what 27 hours maybe? 27 hours and three games for Arkansas that's got to tell. Pitch is up high for a ball. Well, he gave him a strike. Did he? Two balls and two strikes. My math is having problems. It's got to be 28 hours. <laughs> there are four hours between 7 o'clock and 3 o'clock. Yeah, okay. Pitch is swung on and missed for strike three, and Shirali has gotten Lowski. There are two away. He has struck out two men here in the third. The batter will be the second baseman, Brett Harrison. If Shiraldi keeps rolling, Cliff Gustafson's going to be faced with something of a dilemma. Because it would be tough to take a guy out when he was pitching so very well. Pitch comes down low for a ball. It's one ball and no strikes. But with a 12 to nothing lead, he's got a couple of fine freshmen in Eric Boudreaux and Wade Phillips that he would like to get into tournament action, I'm sure. And plus, with Shiraldi working with two days rest, you don't expect him to have to go very long. 1-0 pitch. There's a strike, and it's one ball and one strike. Frank Robinson, the San Francisco Giants, faced that problem just last week. He had a pitcher who was coming off a disabled list who pitched a no-hitter through six innings, and he pulled him. 1-1 one, one pitch coming. Breaking pitch is down low for a ball, and it's two balls and one strike. Chiraldi has allowed three base runners, two on walks and one on an error. Ball foul back. It is two and two to Brett Harrison. Arkansas has got a long bus ride home coming back to Fayetteville, mm. and then they wait. That's why it might be. That's why these six innings will be very important, and they put some runs on the board. The Razorbacks did, and coming down was break up the trip. I'm sure they'll do the same going back. Ground ball out to Tolentino. He'll take it to the bag unassisted, and he is there in time to get Brett Harrison in the bottom of the third. Arkansas goes with no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. We're through three. Texas leads Arkansas 12 to nothing. Calvin Chiraldi getting by with very few pitches that inning. As Arkansas, of course, has to be a free swinging team right now. When you're down by 12 runs, you can't afford to take pitches. Steve, as this is the Southwest Conference Baseball Tournament of the last collegiate event scheduled in the 1983 season for the home sports folks in the Southwest Conference official competition, we need to take a look at next year because those of you who are part of home sports entertainment as our subscriber base, you're going to see some phenomenal things in Southwest Conference competition. You'll be able to see the collegiate football of five Southwest Conference schools, Texas, Texas A&M, Rice, Houston, and SMU are all part of the home sports entertainment package. We'll have basketball for you. There will be other events next spring, and 83 and 84 is going to be a banner year. This ball game right now may be out of reach. It's 12 to nothing, but you're in for something big throughout 1983 and 84 on home sports entertainment. You get the best in professional athletics. You know that. But you're also able to see the best in collegiate athletics. We're very proud of the fact that you're part of us, and we're glad that you're with us. As we head now to the top of the fourth inning, Texas and Arkansas, Game 7, Southwest Conference Championship, Longhorns, well in front of 12 to nothing. 12 to nothing, and the first batter for the University of Texas will be the right fielder, Steve LeBay. Texas coming off of that eight-run third inning when they sent 10, 11, 12 batters to the plate. Mr. Shanks on the mound for Arkansas taking his final warm-ups. He'll face the bottom of the order. That's Steve LeBay, Mike Trent, and Brian Burroughs. Dennis Shanks, the pitcher, right-hander for Arkansas. 
Texas, 12 runs, nine hits, one error. Arkansas has goose eggs across the board. Bay has not officially had it at bat. He's had a walk and a sacrifice. Way high, ball one. Has scored one run. Steve LeBay, a rarity in baseball. He bats right, throws left, and has done some pitching for Texas. One of the few left-handers Coach Gustafson can call on. That ball is chopped. Well, it's popped up way high. Third baseman and Pagnazzi running over. They run into each other, and Pagnazzi catches it. A classic example of miscommunication that almost resulted in the ball being dropped. But Tom Bagnazzi survived the run-in with Mark Berry to get the first out. He looked down at Berry as if to say, <laughs> what are you doing here? There they go again. You can see Pagnazzi coming. He's playing the ball all the way, and it doesn't look like either one of them call it. Berry's playing it all the way. Pagnazzi makes the catch, and Berry has to dive out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> look at the expression on Pagnazzi. Like, where did you come from? That might be a freshman. We're talking about Dennis Shanks, the pitcher, because the pitcher really has to take control in that situation and make sure the infielders know who should take it. That'll bring Mike Trent, the center fielder, up to plat, at the plate for Texas. He's 0 for 1. He's also scored a run. As a matter of fact, every Texas batter has scored a run, except for Brian Burroughs. Who is driven into? <laughs> There's a swing and a miss. That evens the count at one and one. Longhorns, perhaps, should they hold on with this impressive win? Not only would we get an, uh, a bid to the NCAA, but perhaps we get to host a regional. There's That's still a couple a of offer, uh, grabs. They have set six regional sites, or they've set five, really. And well, there is a junk pitch that Trent was way out in front. There are a total of eight regionals to be played. We'll have a chance in a minute to run down those sites that have already been assigned, as well as the automatic qualifiers, the people who have won their conferences or their conference tournament, whatever. They're the designated team to come out of the conference. Shanks is ready. Ah, that is a rarity as that's six to three if you're scoring. That's a broken bat hit with an aluminum bat. You just don't see that very often. Hit it right on the handle and just snapped it off. And that becomes a dangerous weapon. When that thing snaps, you're talking about a sickle as it goes out there. Fortunately, it did not come off very well because it was deadened when the ball broke. But it just breaks the bat right in two, just like you took it and laid it over your knee and broke a piece of wood. Brian Burroughs, number two, third baseman. He also has no official at bat. He has. Walked in has a sacrifice. One of the reasons that colleges went to the aluminum bat, one of the main reasons was the economic factor. <laughs> Let's take a look at the broken bat again. He hit it right on the end of the bat. Yeah, I thought he hit it on the handle, but he just the handle snapped, snapped it off. A little weakness in the metal at that point. Next pitch, also a ball. You talk about the metal bat being an economic factor. Coach Gustafson also said that he really liked him. He said, but it looked kind of country to have five guys use the same bat and hand it <laughs> off to each other. <laughs> like we couldn't afford enough. Texas bat budget went from 300 from three thousand to three hundred dollars when they went to the aluminum bat in 1974. That pitch was a strike, so it's two and one. There is what is left of a magnesium, aluminum, or metal whatever bat. That is a soft looping liner to left field that will drop in front of the left fielder. Roberts for a base hit for Texas. So now they're in double digits in the hit. That's their 10th hit. Norm Roberts learned something. In the earlier ball games, we have seen him on a play like that, try to shoestring it, uh, try to big the big play. But in this tournament, he's had a couple of errors. And this time, on the little soft liner, in place of doing anything foolish, he comes in and plays it routinely as a base hit keeps it in front now you couldn't see it on that shot particularly but he did just back up and say I'm going to take it easy I'm not going to dive for it as he's done before Burroughs did a good job of waiting on that soft curveball and then taking it to left field that brings the top of the order up that's Bill Bates Bates fouls one off 
I'll tell you that broken bat a while ago that Trent had. A lot of times you're going to get a lot of guys mad at you. That may be the bat a bunch of folks are used to using. You broke my favorite bat. I was going to say, baseball players, of course, not being very superstitious, they don't care what bat they use. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Ground ball to short. He bobbles it, steps on the bag, however, for out number three. So Arkansas escapes without giving up a run. In the top of the fourth, Texas did get one hit. No Arkansas errors, one man left. We're going to the bottom of the fourth. And our score, the Longhorns 12, the Razorback 0. We talked earlier about the fact that the winner of this ball game gets an automatic bid into the NCAA. We can take a look now at the automatic qualifiers who are already in the playoffs. The NCAA tournament, of course, is the big one. The national championship in college athletics comes in the College World Series. It's played in Omaha, Nebraska in early June. And prior to that, there will be eight regional tournaments. The eight winners will advance to Omaha. The automatic qualifiers who have already been announced are North Carolina, the Citadel, Temple, Delaware, Grambling, Moorhead State, New York Tech, William and Mary, South Alabama. That's Eddie Stanky's team, and he's in his final season. He's announced he's retiring. Stanford won the Pac-10, and they have a good ball club. They've been flirting with the national championship the last several yes. years. Florida State was here in Austin at a regional tournament last year. And the upset winner, we said earlier, Indiana State won the Missouri Valley. They qualified directly from there. The at-large selections who've already been named, Miami, Pan American, South Carolina, Wichita State, Arizona State, and Tulane. And Steve is quickly counting the teams. Your regional tournaments, the East Tournament will be played at North Carolina. The Mideast will be possibly at Michigan, depending on who wins the Big Ten. Northeast is at Maine or Delaware. The South Tournament is at Florida State. And the two West tournaments, the West 1 is at Stanford, the West 2 is at Arizona State. The Central and the Midwest Regional sites have not yet been determined. Here's Tom Pagnazzi to lead off for the University of Arkansas, the bottom of the fourth inning. They trail by 12. Now, there have been 18 teams so far getting bids to the NCAA playoffs. They're halfway there. Halfway there. 36 teams will be invited. And out of that 36, 8 will make it to Omaha. There's the next pitch, and it's a strike, one and one. And if you have never been to the College World Series in Omaha, it is an amazing event. The town literally opens its arms to everyone involved with college baseball. It's a tremendous college spectacle. That ball is lifted out into right center field, and there goes Calvin Giraldi's no-hitter as Pagnazzi gets a single. Well, he didn't have to worry about it a long time. It came in the bottom of the fourth inning. Will probably also make Cliff Gustafson's decision easier when he decides to take Calvin out and let him rest. Now, the NCAA regionals will be two weeks from this week, so there'll be lots of time in between for the teams that do get the bid. Here's the first pitch to Norm Roberts, Arkansas's cleanup hitter. He's 0 for 1. It was a ball. Texas already has some tentative practice games set in case they do get into the playoffs. Next pitch is high, ball two. There was some discussion that there may have a conference call on Thursday. They'll know more about some of the other tournaments and possibly then we'll be able to tell some folks what they can do. Inside, ball three. Actually, what they've done is they've trapped Texas and Arkansas in a situation where they're almost uh, flirting with being illegal because both teams want to figure that they're going to get bids and Texas as you said has already set some practice games after this tournament's over and that means they're they've got games going after their season is technically <laughs> over unless they're in the playoffs now Southwest Conference rules allow Texas to schedule practice games if they are still in competition right if they're not in competition then those games would not be legal it's a matter of uh, maybe let's try to get together if we're both in the playoffs well, I think the situation now for Texas, obviously, is with a 12 to nothing lead here. If they lose this one, <laughs> the NCAA is going to look long and say, wait a minute here. And all of a sudden, the count is three and two. Seraldi comes back with two strikes. Roberts now has a full count. Nobody out, bottom of the fourth. Texas well in front. 
Arkansas with a man on first. Chiraldi's ready, delivers. Oh, foul tip that Heron couldn't quite hold on, so Robert stays alive. We're talking about how long Chiraldi will go. Of course, there's no difference in college and professional baseball in the number of innings required. To get credit for the victory, Chiraldi must go five. That ball in on the wrist. And that's going to be tough to get anybody. Roberts quick, but not quick enough. Jeff Parrott showing his rifle arm. Roberts kind of Willie Moscone did that. That looked like a, a pool shot right off the Drop plate. Drop that right on the plate. I said, is it hit in the dirt? <laughs> <laughs> Heron out with a good play, grabs it and throws to first base, just in time with the long stretch by Jose Tolentino to get the out. The next batter, designated hitter, Michael Hoggins, batting 299 coming into this game. And he's 0 for 1. First pitch is a strike. Switch hitter batting left against the right-handed Chiraldi. Next pitch is inside. Texas playing Loggins. Well, they're shading him toward left. He's got a pretty good gap in right center field. Razorbacks have a runner in scoring position. That's Pagnazzi, number three. Ball fouled back. Two strikes. One ball. And the Razorback better. Crowd kind of quiet, but being in Austin, Texas, fairly contented right now. Next pitch, inside, low, ball two. Geraldi <laughs> looks in, is ready. Here's the pitch. The ball's line foul. That baby was a hot shot. That went into the Texas dugout down the way. <laughs> There's Joe Evans, the academic counselor that fell in the blue jeans who became a participant. Unwilling one, I might add. <laughs> There's Killingsworth, a fellow with a glove on his face. Winners tell jokes, losers say shut up for deal. <laughs> Texas is ahead 12 to nothing. Oh, that pitch just misses and Chiraldi doesn't buy it. That'll fill it up at three and two. As Seraldi looks in for the payoff pitch. That ball is wrapped into left center. Trent moves over and makes the catch. That's out number two for the Razorbacks in the bottom of the fourth. That will bring up the third baseman, Mark Berry. See if the Longhorns do go ahead and earn the NCAA berth. This would be for Cliff Gustafson, the 14th time in his 16 years at Texas that he has taken the team into the NCAA playoffs. And He's been I've, to the College World Series yeah. a total of 10 times. Here's the first pitch to Barry, and that's a strike. It would also be his fifth straight Southwest Conference postseason tournament championship. As a matter of fact, if that holds up, only two schools will be winners in the seven years. Baylor won the first two, and Texas won them all since then. Chiraldi delivers outside. One and one is the count with two out, top of the fourth. Longhorns, 12 runs, 10 hits, and one error. Arkansas, no runs, one hit, no errors. Ball misses. Ball hits 
sharply in the center field. Trent moves back, though, near the warning track and makes it for the final out in the bottom of the fourth. For Arkansas, there were no runs, one hit, no Texas errors, and one man left on base. We are now through four complete innings. Our score, Texas 12, Arkansas 0. You're watching Southwest Conference Baseball on Home Sports Entertainment. Now Texas holds a 12 to nothing lead. Arkansas has been in this tournament every year. The only team to be in the tournament every year. All seven, but they've been a bridesmaid almost every time. They've never won it. They've got a lot of wood to chop tonight. They got a forest to chop to come back in this one. Leading off for the University of Texas, the top of the fifth will be Mike Brumley. The shortstop came in batting 269. He struck out in the first, got a single in the second. Walks, got an RBI in the third. He will face Dennis Shanks, the freshman pitcher for the University of Arkansas. He's ready. And that's low for ball one. Brumley, a junior, has had a lot of pro scout attention. Has not had the year he had last year, but it's been a solid, good solid year. And he's certainly shown defensively he's capable of playing pro ball. Swing and a miss. Now leaving the count at one and one. Brumley, as we said, was a center fielder last year for the University of Texas when they went to Omaha. As a matter of fact, was all conference. He's been the shortstop this year. Shanks delivers. Swing and a miss. Brumley goes after a low one. Crowd of about 4,500 looking on, mostly satisfied as the Longhorns seem on their way to cruising to an NCAA bid and more than likely for perhaps a host spot in the NCAA regionals. That one's fouled off. Longhorns have finished third at the College World Series the last two years. They'd like to get back there and get another shot. That ball is hit sharply to left field, but Roberts has a beat on it back at the warning track and makes the catch. Nice play by Norm Roberts, who yesterday in the first game, or Sunday in the first game against Houston when the outfield was very, very wet from a heavy rain, had some problems, but not today. You talk about that third place finish. Texas, during the 10 years Cliff Gustafson has taken him there. Longhorns have been third four times. They were fourth three times. They won the national championship in 1975. And the batter right now is Kirk Killingsworth, the designated hitter who takes the first pitch for a strike. Texas has been pretty much a fixture since the Gustafson era in Omaha. Swing and a miss, way in front. Just playing games. They went in 68 and they finished fifth. They went in 69 in 70. In 71, Pan American won the Central Regional. 72, 73, 74, Texas went, finished as a bridesmaid in the top four, but didn't win it. And then finally in 75, the Longhorns won the national championship, the third for a Texas ball club. That ball's low outside. Had some good talent on that 75 team. Pitchers like Richard Tex Wortham, Jim Gideon, Mickey Reichenbach, a heavy hitter, Charlie Prosky, the center fielder. That pitch is a strike. Probably the most well-known of the survivors of that ball club is Keith Moreland, who's playing yes. for the Chicago Cubs. 76, Texas was eliminated in the tournament in Arlington. As Killingsworth leaves, the big hand is for Jose Tolentino, who comes to the plate. Jose Tolentino, as we said, if this isn't the most valuable player of this tournament, I just don't know who would be. Four games, he's had 15 at bats. He's had nine hits, nine runs batted in. He scored six runs, and he's had a couple of long blasts, including a grand slam home run his last time up. This is his kind of situation. He's a showman. 
somebody asked Cliff about Tolentino if he was the best fielding first baseman that the Longhorns had had. He said no, but he's maybe he might be, but he's for sure the fanciest. <laughs> He does everything with a flair, and he's certainly done it well. With his four runs batted in on that grand slam, he now hits the 60 mark. And he's closing in on averaging a run batted in for every game. That's a sharply hit single into right field. Jose Tolentino continues to wrap the ball. Tolentino is just two double shy of the school record set last year by Randy Day and of course should Texas qualify for the playoffs he'll have a lot of opportunities to tie or break that record. He may go after even a bigger one than that. Keith Moreland drove in 72 runs leads the RBI record for Texas in 74 with 72. Tolentino is just 12 RBIs away from that. Jeff Heron the next batter two for two this game he scored two runs. That's right, you know, Tully, as we said, now Texas is playing in its 65th game, and he's got 60 runs batted in. That's a nice ratio. Heron takes a pitch. High for ball two. Count is two balls, no strikes. There are two out the top of the fifth. Texas cruising along with a 12-0 lead over the University of Arkansas. There's the next pitch. That ball is held, so it's sharply to the center fielder. Robinson playing him just right, takes it in for the third out. So the Longhorns come up empty-handed in the top of the fifth. No runs, one hit, no errors, one man left. We are halfway through our ball game, and the University of Texas leads Arkansas 12 to zip. You know, after the devastating beginning, Dennis Shanks has not done a bad job for Arkansas. He came in and Gave up the home run to Tolentino in the third inning, but since that time, he's been pretty effective. The young man has given up three hits other than that, all of them singles. Has not given up any runs himself other than the one to Tolentino. Might have a bright future for Arkansas, who can certainly use the well, pitching. Need to build depth. some pitching depth. Yep. But we were talking about those tournaments that they have assigned a while ago and the fact that the Midwest and the Central Regionals have not yet been assigned. They have also not designated which of the two tournaments will be six team tournaments. Now they don't have to make two of them. They can make just one a six team regional, but they will take a maximum of 36 teams. They could take fewer than that. There will be at least one six team regional in all of that. Last year that tournament was held here in Austin. A six team regional but the NCAA has made some interesting decisions. They have decided not to give Miami a tournament so far. And that's, that's right. It's kind of unusual. They've got one of the good facilities as you look at Calvin Chiraldi who is working in inning number five. He needs to finish this one to get credit for the victory and then I'm sure that Cliff Gustafson uh, if Chiraldi is ready to leave will be glad to take him out and give the two freshmen Phillips and Boudreaux a chance to get out there and see what they can do. First batter for Arkansas will be their left handed hitting first baseman Ralph Krause takes the first pitch as a strike. Now, should Calvin win this, that would be win number 11 this year. Bill, and I'm not, I am can't quite remember what the school record is for the most wins in a single season. It's an NCAA team. record for a long time. It is no longer, but uh, Jim Gideon won 19 ball games for Texas and set That's an right. NCAA record when That's he did. Right. But there have been 20 game winners since, including a fellow from Hawaii back in 1980, if I remember right. Next pitch is low. That makes it count two and one. Should Texas win this impressively and get not only the bid, but also a host spot in the regional. Uh, last couple of years, there have been some great baseball teams brought into Austin, and if that happens this year, swing and a miss, strike two. You can watch some great baseball by coming down here. We've seen people like John Elway from Stanford. We've seen Hawaii. We've seen uh, Eastern Michigan, always a good team. Florida State. Here's the next pitch. That ball is lifted out into left field in the foul territory, but Denny's there to make the catch for out number one. Now, last year here in Austin, we saw Ohio State, Florida State, Eastern Michigan, Oklahoma. Harden Simmons won its conference tournament. It was here. 
Texas had the six-team regional here. And then, as you say, the year before, Mr. Elway was in here. I'll tell you, we've seen some great ones in college baseball that have come through and have gone on to start them, and really in other sports. Here's Mike Robinson with one out for Arkansas. I guess the most impressive baseball player I have seen come through here was a fellow by the name of Dave Winfield for the University of Minnesota. Uh, we've seen some great ones from Minnesota down here. Yeah. That's strike two. 0 and 2 is the count on Robinson. Pretty good shortstop played here not too many years ago named Paul Molitor. Oh, yeah. Minnesota. I remember asking assistant coach Bill Buffet, that's ball one, about Winfield, and he said, you know, you see people come to bat in college and they're looking for a fastball or a curveball to hit. Winfield came to bat looking for a baseball to hit. Swing and a miss. Strike three. So did, so did Robinson. He just didn't hit it. <laughs> he threw the high hard one right by him for his third strike out of the ball game. That will bring to the plate the bottom of the order for Arkansas. Oh, we've got a pinch hitter, though. Jim Ward is scheduled, but we've got number 21. What if I Mark told you I'll look somewhere else? All right, it's Mark, Mark Jackson. Jackson. Freshman. Out of North Little Rock. He's an outfielder, so he won't be taking Ward's place. He's supposed to be pinch hitting for him. Mark Jackson has been in 10 games. He is one for nine as a batter with a 111 batting average. Well, he's now batting 200 because he just lofted a soft single into right field. The Razorbacks. Get another hit off of Calvin Sherald to put one on with two out in the fifth. And that will bring the top of the order, Scott Lowski. I'd look up Jackson's stolen base statistics, Bill, but when you're behind by 12, I guess it really isn't very important. Lowski, 0 for 2. Says he runs well in the brochure. <laughs> <laughs> he takes high, ball one. Lowski and Pagnazzi came into this game as the leading hitters for Arkansas with 368 averages. Giraldi delivers, and that's a strike. The Razorbacks brought some fans with them. They were doing a lot of suey pig yesterday, but they've been pretty quiet today. It's always one of the neat things in college baseball, or college athletics in general, but particularly so in baseball. That is a solid hit to center field. You're going to have the parents that follow the folks. They're going to come with them wherever they go. Mom and dad are going to be there to see youngster play. Whether your son is in high school or college or whatever, you're going to try everything you can to get there, see what may be the last game. You never yeah. know. Well, that'll bring to the plate the second batter in the Arkansas order. That is number six, Brett Harrison, their second baseman. He's 0 for 2. He takes a strike. Giraldi needs one more out to become the pitcher of record. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Texas ahead 12 to nothing. And there it is. Oh, off Giraldi. Bates has it. Well, you can score that one to four to three. And you can score it Ole Jose at first <laughs> base because Tolentino was the man who made it happen in the very last analysis. Now that one is going to go off the hand, the pitching hand of Chiraldi here, as he reaches back and hits the baseball. Now Bates grabs it. His throw to first base is down low, but Tolentino again with a scoop at first to dig it out and get Harrison, and that will end the inning. So for Arkansas, no runs once again. In the bottom of the fifth, there were two hits, and there were no errors, and there were two men left on base. We're through five complete innings. Texas with a 12-run lead on their way to the NCAA playoffs. And Calvin Chiraldi is now the pitcher of record. I was looking down at the Longhorn bullpen to see if we could see any action, but we're shielded just a little from the... Texas bullpen by the end of the grandstand. The crowd beginning to filter just a little bit out 
as it is drawing on a oh, little over two hours into our ball game. But uh, business is picked up. We really kind of moved along yes. after that eight run third inning when Texas seemed to just uh, really put it away. Arkansas has got a long way to go in more ways than one. They've got 12 runs to come back on, and then they got to go home to Fayetteville after it's all over and sit and wait for an NCAA bid. You take a look down into the Texas dugout. That's AstroTurf that you see down there covering the dugout area. There is a tartan turf around, or tartan uh, surface around as the warning track right there in front of the dugout. We've got a new shortstop, of course, because uh, Jim Ward was out trying to get that guy's number down there. It's going to be Gary Curtis. Gary Curtis, all right. Uh, Curtis has been a good hitter for the Razorbacks. His only problem has been defensively, and that's one of the things that's been a problem for Arkansas, not necessarily in this ball game, but uh, Curtis has made 20 errors in 160-some-odd uh, oh, attempts, so that'll give you some idea of the problems he's had. Arkansas just fielding 952 as a team. David Denny lifts the first pitch into medium right center. Robinson over makes the put out, and that is out number one. So Denny, who had been two for three, is now two for four. Denny likes to swing at the first pitch, and that went up uh, a little and went ahead and hit it. And of course, right now, I Texas like to see is going to be a little. I'm going to say he's a wonderful <laughs> American for swinging at the first pitch. <laughs> Took the words right out of our mouth. <laughs> That'll bring up Steve LeBay now playing, playing right field in this game for Texas. Shanks delivers. Curveball that right on the line for strike one. Outfield shading him toward left. Next pitch is a little low. Ball one. Good picture of Shanks, the pitcher for Arkansas. A very wide stance there, you can tell. Swings and chops that foul. Coach Gus makes a nice grab of that one, and the crowd gives him a... There's the winningest coach in college baseball, Cliff Gustafson. Over 770 <laughs> victories in his career at Texas. Moving up to the 800 mark and his winning percentage well over 80% of the games he has played, he's won. That is a slow curve that LeBay pops up into the infield, shortstop back, and Curtis makes the out. LeBay hit that one right off the fist, and as he started down to first base, you could see his hand stinging as he dropped the bat. <laughs> You mentioned Coach, Coach Gustafson's record. As a matter of fact, with the win tonight, it would be win number 780. That'll bring to the plate center fielder Mike Trent. Followed two legends in Texas. There really have been three coaches over the long years that have made the Texas baseball tradition. Of course, it was begun by legendary Uncle Billy Dish, who coached in Texas until the late 30s. Then Bib Falk took over and went through 25 years of success before retiring in 67. Bib Falk, a tremendous baseball character. He uh, is at every Texas game now as a fan. And when uh, he and Coach Gustafson and Billy Dish's family were honored earlier this year and they gave him a plaque, he asked him to say a few words. He said, I've heard too much talk already. We got another baseball game to play. Let's go play it. I'm telling you one thing about Bib Falk now. He wants to be remembered and will be remembered for those who saw him play as yes. the big leaguer. Uh, he was a great coach at Texas and earned tremendous respect for that. But he hit 314 in the major leagues for a lifetime career. He went up in 1920 after the 1919 Black Sox scandals. He never played an inning of minor league ball until he became a player, a manager coach. Next pitch high, two and one. If I remember my history correct, correctly, a fellow you might have heard of was pretty impressed with it. A fellow by the name of Babe Ruth thought he was a pretty good ball Ruth player. Ruth said he was the best fielder he ever saw. He said he made the greatest catch that he had ever seen talking about a play that Mr. Falk made. That ball is also lifted out into center field, moving over to left center. Robinson drifts over, makes the catch for the third out. So the Razorbacks 
put Texas down one, two, three, and I believe that's the first time that's happened in this ball game. Bless them for the work that they do. <laughs> so for the Longhorns, nothing across the top of the six. We'll go to the bottom of the six. The Razorbacks still trailing by 12. We'll have the meat of their order coming up. Batters four, five, and six. Go back to what we were talking about, about Bib Falk. I can remember going to Sports Information Directors Convention in Chicago in, in the early 70s, and one of the old sports writers there talking to me and saying that uh, he remembered Falk as a hitter and that uh, he was the best he had seen. He really was a very, very good baseball player and certainly is remembered for both his college coaching and for his baseball playing as the big leaguer and will henceforth ever be. Could I could work a fungo bat about as well as anybody has ever done. He could he used to work his pitchers in the outfield. He put them out there in center field and the way he would work them would say, okay, he's gonna hit them fly balls, and he'd hit one in left center, and just about the time the pitcher got there, he'd hit one over in right center. And those guys would be going <laughs> back and forth and back and forth at old Clark Field, University of Texas. It's in the big time now. This is Dish Falk Field as you get a panoramic view of the stadium, one of the great facilities in college baseball one of the few astroturf facilities and certainly with the lights and the stands all together it's made uh, to major league quality all except for the grandstand in fact the playing surface in the facility lights and all uh, equal to that any major league ballpark it seats 5,000 in the main grandstand three more thousand in the bleachers Calvin Swirly ready to work to Tana Pagnazzi Pagnazzi, the all Southwest Conference catcher, and there are a lot of folks thinking maybe he ought to be all conference at third base instead of catcher. Point we made a minute ago about Chiraldi, Steve, as we go to the six and that he is still out there. He'll go as long as he wants to, I'm sure. Cliff is not going to risk anything, but if Chiraldi feels good, he's going to go ahead and let him pitch some more. And of course, with the fact that the regionals are two weeks away, there's plenty of time for everybody to rest up. Pagnazzi has a count of one and one on him here. This is also this is also an Arkansas ball club that came from a 10 5 deficit up in Little Rock and darn near beat Texas. So Cliff's not going to surrender early. Still got a lot of heat on that ball. That's a strike two. Arkansas has done some run scoring on this season. They're perfectly capable of it as we saw in the game that they played against Houston in game five of this tournament. And that misses just outside, so says umpire Taylor. Pitcher Chiraldi doesn't agree, but he loses that one once again. That evens the count at two and two. No doubt about that one. Swing and a miss. Strike three. That is strikeout number four for Chiraldi. The first out of the bottom of the sixth. Calvin, thanks to a lot of batting by his teammates, had a lot of rest. Tonight, he now faces the cleanup hitter for Arkansas, Norm Roberts. He takes the first pitch called strike right on the inside corner. Great angle out there from the center field camera. You can really call your own balls and strikes from out there. That one's low and away. I was talking last night in the press room to the umpires who would come <laughs> by. <laughs> they were asking if we were televising again tonight. Joe Bob Taylor behind home plate realized he's under the gun. That is over to the first base and Tolentino will take it himself for out number two. Hey, Al Bill, if you don't think umpires don't know about instant replay, think again. They do. But more often than not, they are found to be correct on, on the replays. Now, somebody made the point a long time ago about an umpire. If you if you call home plate just from one pitcher, if you have a game where he throws a first pitch to Michael Hawkins, the designated hitter, is high ball one. You have a game where he throws a hundred pitches, and that would be low for a pitcher. But yeah. if you've got one where he throws a hundred, say an umpire misses ten pitches, he still made ninety. Yeah. It's a pretty darn good score on anybody's test. That ball is inside ball two. And you have so many people watching you. Now you have the all-seeing eye of television as well. 
And that is way outside. Ball three. Three and O's the count. Geraldi looking a little tired. There is activity now in the Texas bullpen. That is way high. Ball four. Four straight pitches, and Roberts gets a, uh, Loggins gets a free pass. That is Kirk Killingsworth once again up and working. He has seen an awful lot of that Texas bullpen in this tournament, but he hasn't seen any action on the field. Orange got complete games out of the first three trips. Geraldi completed the first one, then Capel, then Roger Clemens in the game against Arkansas, game six of the tournament. There's a strike from Geraldi to Mark Berry, who's the third baseman. He has been in this tournament. He's played designated hitter an awful lot for Arkansas, but he's been the third baseman in this tournament. That ball outside curve. Pagnazzi, as we said, after the Texas series, played almost exclusively at third base, moving from catcher, but now in this tournament, he's been playing catcher while Barry moves to third. Runners going, the hit and runs on. That ball's to Burroughs. Over to first and plenty of time for out number three. Once again, Arkansas comes up empty. This time in the bottom of the sixth, there were no runs. No hits, no Texas errors. One man left on because of a walk. So two-thirds of the way through our score, Texas 12, Arkansas 0. You're watching Home Sports Entertainment. How come Ross's three innings were a lot quicker than mine? <laughs> Civic work they've been doing in the year. Back at Dish Park Field on the campus of the University of Texas in the Southwest Conference Baseball Tournament Championship Ball Game. Texas leading Arkansas 12 to nothing. Longhorns with 12 runs on 11 hits and one error. Razorbacks with no runs on three hits, no errors. And for Texas, leading off in the top of the seventh inning will be Brian Burroughs, the third baseman. As the freshman Dennis Shanks is still on the mound, here's the wind of the pitch rides high for a ball. It's one ball and no strikes to Brian Burroughs. Burroughs, one for one officially, had a sacrifice, had a bunt, and had a single in the fourth inning. He's driven in two of the Longhorn runs. Pitch rides high for a ball. And as we said, he's the only fellow no that hasn't scored. Dennis Shanks came in and gave up a grand slam homer to Jose Tolentino that made it 12 to nothing in the third. But since that time, he's pitched pretty well, giving up only three singles through four innings. The pitch is a strike call to Burroughs, and it's two balls and one strike. Quite a success story in Mr. Burroughs. This year, he's hit over 300 all season long. Pitch breaks for ball three. Three balls and one strike. Well, I spent the field. Pitch half a ball four. Burrows drop. They walked in four runs with four bases loaded base on balls. They have issued a total of six walks in the game. Bill Bates, the Longhorn second baseman, has been very instrumental in the Longhorns' attack. With a 12-run lead at this point, but... You're going to have to execute that play somewhere down the line in the playoffs. 
Cliff Gustafson baseball or any good coach's baseball is you're going to stick with your fundamentals and you're going to do it right all the way through regardless if you start getting careless even if you're ahead 12 to nothing you wind up having that as a carryover into your next activity and you never you never need to start doing it wrong oh one pitch comes inside for ball and it's one ball and one strike and now Bates and uh, the catcher are in an argument and here we got a little problem as Tolentino is out in a hurry to get Brumley out of the heat of it as the on deck hitter Brumley was out to holler Cliff Gustafson's down and we got a little rhubarb going as Timbers player Bates thought that one was a little close to him and it says on page 23 of the manual in baseball if the pitcher throws at you you're supposed to get mad <laughs> I think what you're seeing here also is when you got a game going like this one, it doesn't take much to set off the teams. And Gustafson is telling Mr. Bates there's no real reason to do that right now. You can watch him with his head down. If that isn't a daddy to the <laughs> youngster right there. <laughs> I think we just got our hands slapped a little bit. Billy Bates will step back in. It was ball one couple of freshmen here one ball one strike and now Joe Bob Taylor is stepping up and he is talking to the catcher Pagnazzi warning him he is warning Bates umpire's got to take charge Bates now talking to the umpire Taylor One one pitch lifted to center field. Center fielder starts in, goes back on the run and makes the catch and Bates is out. And that may be for the best. Yes. Tempers were getting a little heated there as Bates gets a hand from the partisan crowd here. The batter will be Mike Brumley. Mr. Bates still a little angry as you can see in the third base dugout. It's part of being a freshman. Yeah. Mike Brumley is one for three. Pitch comes, runners going to second, throw down, and Burroughs is out. Everybody forgot about Burroughs. <laughs> the rhubarb and all, and he is out trying to steal. On a good throw from Pagnazzi, they're two away. Nice throw. It's ball one to Mike Brumley. Pitch to Brumley, hit out high to the left side and foul territory and out of play. Boy, this is an unforgiving crowd tonight. You drop a foul ball and they boo you. One ball, one strike to Mike Brumley. Going to look again <laughs> at the pitch to the base. There. The shortstop right on it with the tag. Burroughs almost got there. Good bang, bang play. Good call by the, the ump right there. Two to six if you're scoring on that play. One ball and one strike to Brumley. Pitches chopped down the first base side. Pitcher's going to take it and go to the bag himself. Nice play by the freshman pitcher. And the inning is over. As in the seventh, there are no runs on no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We go to the bottom of the seventh. It is still Texas 12, Arkansas nothing, and we had a little temper as a little of the tension was released there and again I think uh, you know you do what you see and I, it's not been that long since in the majors the other day we had to play where one of the players thought he was thrown at race chased them out and youngsters growing up yeah. live by example they see somebody else do that and think well if I'm gonna be a big leaguer I need to do that too and I, you know you can certainly see reason when the there actually is a pitch thrown but so often and in a situation like this when the pitch just gets away from a guy you need to back off a minute say hang on here let's not blow this thing wide open or out of proportion somebody can get hurt when you yeah. get in a fight you were talking about a freshman Bill Bates another freshman Shanks pitching and you got to figure a freshman probably got to have that much control to begin with and Bates as we said a freshman perhaps taking it too personally and then for Arkansas the frustration of a 
12-run deficit. It was a chance to blow off some steam, too. That's why I think the Arkansas bench emptied so quickly. Well, it's okay. Nobody's hurt. I was impressed with Tolentino. He jumped out yeah. there in the middle of it in a hurry to make sure that nothing happened. And it, you see guys charge out of the dugout. A lot of times they want in the fight, and Tolentino was coming out to make sure that it was not going to happen. There's Kirk Killingsworth taking his warm-up tosses. He is the designated hitter in the game for Texas, but he is also warming now to look in earnest as though he might be coming in for Calvin Chiraldi, who is on the mound here in the seventh inning. Calvin was expected to go five. He has gone six, and I'm sure that the fact that he's got a shutout working, he's allowed just three hits, and I'm sure he feels good. Otherwise, Cliff Custis wouldn't leave him out there. Pitch is a strike to Ralph Krause. Calvin Seraldi had not had a complete game, night inning game, until his last, his next to last start, and he's had two in a row. Here's the pitch. That one rides high for a ball, and it's one ball and one strike to Ralph Krause. Krause had walked, and he fly to left field. And you may have a point, Steve. One of the reasons he may be going longer is to get conditioned to doing that. There's ball two, two balls and one strike. During the Southwest Conference campaign, Cliff Gustafson used Giraldi as the seven inning pitcher through all of the series until the very end. So going a full nine innings is something that uh, Giraldi has not done all that many times. And so that could well be one of the reasons that Cliff is trying to get him as much work as he possibly can here. Three balls and one strike. Which is a strike call and it's three and two. Calvin Seraldi went nine innings against Texas A&M the last series of the conference, winning that game 13 to four. He opened up the conference tournament with a four to three nine inning win over Rice. Three two pitch coming, foul back, and it's still three and two. Well, what started out to be such a tournament of close ball games has ended with one that. Uh, so far has been a runaway. Texas in front 12 to nothing over Arkansas in the bottom of the seventh. Strike three call on the outside corner. Krause is down looking. And I think a very good example of just how important this game was to Coach Gustafson and how worried he is is Chiraldi, this pitcher. Chiraldi with the fastball, a tail away from oh boy, him. Nice pitch. <laughs> Did it catch the corner? But Chiraldi is pitching with two days rest when Texas had people like Kirk Killingsworth, Eric Boudreaux, and uh, Wade Phillips rested. But Gustafson was worried enough to send his ace out. First pitch to Mike Robinson is a strike. Here's the wind. The pitch is swung on and missed for strike two. Chiraldi now has struck out five batters. And is quickly ahead of Robinson here. <laughs> Robinson's been a feast or famine guy. He's hit six home run. He struck out 41 times. There is a ball, one ball and no strikes. In 200 at bats, he has had 59 hits, 41 strikeouts. One ball, two strikes. Chiraldi into the windup. Pitches hit like a shot to center field. Trent is over underneath and makes the catch. Robinson made good contact, but hit it right at Mike Trent. And that will bring to the plate the shortstop, Gary Curtis, who will be making his first appearance. Curtis batting 291 on the season, as we said, an excellent hitting shortstop, had trouble fielding. He's had two doubles. Here's There's that center field play. Trent, Texas' best defensive outfielder, good range, gets over to it easily. He's is usually, if he hasn't been starting, is the fellow that Coach Gus puts in the outfield for defensive purposes in the last inning or two. Two out of the bottom of the seventh. Texas leading Arkansas 12 to nothing. Game seven of the Southwest Conference Baseball Tournament. This is the championship ball game. And that's for real. There are no more ball games left. Double elimination tournament after this one. All but one will have two defeats. There's a strike. Curtis is Rawley. Rares and fires. I have really been impressed with Calvin Chiraldi's strength showing here in the later innings with such a short rest. That was one of the big problems for Chiraldi last year. He would throw very hard early and then tail off. And Tony Laird is stepping in to bat and not Gary Curtis. It's going to ruin the scorebook here. 
And we're going to have another pinch hitter for Arkansas. Laird on the season at 333. Pitch rides high for a ball. One ball and one strike. He has served as a designated hitter in 51 ball games. Hit a home run, if I remember right, the other night against Texas when he came in. There's a strike from Chiraldi, and it's one and two. Backs are going to need a new shortstop. Counts two balls and two strikes. Pitch is hit out left side. Going for it is Denny on the run. It is foul. Slice too far off the bat of the left handed hitter. If you're a Razorback fan, you shouldn't despair too much because. There's a little history on the Razorback side. Should they happen to get a bid to the NCAA playoffs? They went all the way to the finals of the College World Series one year after finishing second in the tournament, 1979. Next year, in 1980, Texas and Arkansas really killed each other off. They played like they have done here to a seventh game. We've been one, but that year, the tournament ended on a Tuesday the two teams had to begin regional competition the following Friday. This year, there's an extra weekend between the regionals and this one. Swing and a miss for strike three. Laird is down, and Chiraldi strikes out his sixth man. Make it, yeah, his sixth yeah. man in the ball game. Yeah. In the seventh, there are no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. We have played through seven. It is Texas 12 and Arkansas nothing. And as you can see, the Longhorns have 11 base hits. It all fell apart for Arkansas in the third inning. Texas had scored two in the second. In the third inning, Texas got eight runs. They walked in three runs and then got a grand slam home run from Jose Tolentino that really has put the ball game out of reach to this point. And for Texas, they're getting a good pitching performance out of Calvin Chiraldi, they have to feel very good about their pitching rotation right now. Calvin Chiraldi, Mike Capel, and Roger Clemens. Now, Clemens lost last night or Sunday night, but he had a five-hitter. He pitched very well. So they have to feel they have three solid starters going into the playoffs. I got a feel that Arkansas, too, has gotten something out of this because they've gotten a good job with the freshman. He's come in and, and pitched really very well. Dennis Shanks came in. He did give up the home run to Tolentino, but it was an opposite field hit. It was hit well by Tolentino, but Lord of mercy, you stopped Tolentino yet in this tournament. You were talking about him earlier. Let's talk a little bit about that guy. Jose Tolentino, the junior college transfer, nine hits, nine runs batted in in this conference tournament. He's Texas' leading hitter. Any category you want to name, he's leading. He needs just two doubles to make 29 to tie the school record. With all the games Texas may have left, he should make that easy. He's got a good chance at it as the Longhorns, of course, have the NCAA playoffs looming ahead, and they've got some practice games set to even this weekend prior to that competition. We're just about ready to get back to action. The University of Texas trying to advance on their 12-run lead. First batter is Kirk Killingsworth, who swings and misses at the first pitch. And that's 0-1-1. Killingsworth is batted as the designated hitter in this ball game, and he is 0 for 4. He has struck out twice. He has flied to center field, has grounded into a fielder's choice. The pitch ball lined left side. Roberts will be right there to make the play. Well hit by Killingsworth, and that will bring up Jose Tolentino, and we should get a rousing round of applause for the Longhorn first baseman. As you can begin to hear the crowd with its applause, Tolentino is three for four in this ball game. Some of the fans standing and applauding. He has had a single. He has had the Grand Slam homer and yet another single. And some folks down the first base side have a Mexican national flag that they showed Jose. Ball hit high out to center field. Back is the second baseman coming on as the center fielder. It's the second baseman who will make the play. Tolentino is down. They're two out here in the top of the eighth inning. 
Texas and Arkansas. This one has picked up steam considerably after it looked for a while as though we were going to be here all night after three and a two and a half innings, really. I was going to say the killer and Jose have done their job. Two pitches, two outs. Jeff Heron is two for three in the game. The Longhorn catcher has had two singles. He's been hit by a pitch. He's fly to center field. Here's the pitch. Heron takes it high for a ball. And it's one ball and no strikes. Here's the pitch. That one popped up. Right side, first baseman's calling. He's underneath. He's got it. And the top of the eighth ends in a hurry for Texas. Four pitches for Dennis Shanks. Make it five pitches for Dennis Shanks. And he has gone with no runs on no hits, no errors, and nobody left as we go to the bottom of the eighth. It is still Texas 12 and Arkansas nothing. As our Southwest Conference baseball tournament is heading toward its conclusion, and it has been, we said at the outset, it was going to be the most balanced tournament in years. Well, let's look back at it, Steve, and take a look at what has happened since it all began. Rice Owls, really a tough luck ball club. First of all, in the first game, Arkansas defeated the University of Houston. Send Houston to the loser's bracket. Then the night game, Friday night, Rice and Texas locked up once again. Texas getting a 4-3 to three win. Rice and Texas played four times this year. Texas won all four games by a total of four runs, one run per game. At that point, you had, had played two ball games. You had had two one-run games. That's right, because Arkansas defeated Houston 5-4. to four. Well, the next day in the loser's bracket, Houston and Rice, crosstown rivals, really went in it. 13 innings it took for the University of Houston. He eliminated Rice 4-2. to two. And the Owls had the tough task of going home after playing some good baseball. You got a winner's bracket game then, Arkansas and Texas. Arkansas and Texas, and Calvin Chiraldi was, uh, I'm sorry, that was Mike Cable came in, and uh, Texas won 9-2. to two. Arkansas's two runs came on home runs, and they had a triple play, but it just didn't do much good. Now you have eliminated Rice. You've got Arkansas and Houston in an afternoon game on Sunday. Arkansas and Houston, and as you might expect when the pitchers get down there, a lot of runs, but a close game. Arkansas winning 9-7. to seven. Houston threatening toward the end of the ball game, but they were sent home. And then Arkansas came back last night with that great game where they scored five runs in the sixth inning on a triple and a three-base error to edge Texas 5-4 to four to force tonight's game. And in game seven, we go to the bottom of the eighth inning as Texas leads Arkansas 12 to nothing. Scott Lowski will lead it off for the Razorbacks. Right fielder for Arkansas is one for three. He has one of the three hits off Calvin Chiraldi. The pitch rides up high for ball one, one ball and no strikes. Now down in the bullpen, Kirk Killingsworth has continued to warm, but Chiraldi still is out on the mound for Texas. He has pitched very well. He has shown no signs of weakening. He is still throwing very, very hard. Here's the pitch. That one hit very high right side. Coming in underneath it is LeBay. He calls off Bates, who'd gone back on the play. And there is one man away. Good example of fundamental baseball right there. The second baseman has gone back on the play. Right fielder's coming in. The fielder's got the play. The infielder's going out. LeBay calls him off. Here you go on it. Bill, it's a lot easier, as you know, for the outfielder to make that play because he is coming in. He's moving forward with his momentum, whereas Bill Bates is moving back. That's more difficult. So he hears LeBay wave him off, and LeBay makes the out. We said it earlier, Steve. That's communication. Brett Harrison, the second baseman, is the batter. He's 0 for 3 in the game. Pitches up high for a ball. And it's one ball and no strikes. And speaking of communication, the guys in the truck that are running this program our director, Gerald Oates, asking you shall receive. We talk about that play. There's a replay. The camera guys are doing a great job. There is a strike. And it's one ball and one strike. Change it two balls and one strike. The fellow on the camera you're looking Harrison. at right now, the guy out in center field, he earns his pay because he's up there mighty good way. And when the wind blows, I bet he knows it. Pitches up high for ball three, and it's three balls and one strike. I can remember the Arizona State Series we did here. The rains came, and the poor guy in center field was a wash out there. 3-1 pitch coming. Ground ball right back up the middle. Brumley back of the back cannot make the play, and it's a base hit. It is the fourth hit off Calvin Chiraldi, and with one out here in the bottom of the eighth, Arkansas has a base runner. Texas leads it 12 to nothing. It's the championship game of the Southwest Conference Baseball Tournament. 
I'm Bill Little with Steve Ross on Home Sports Entertainment. As you look at first base, and now Tom Pagnazzi, the catcher, will come to the plate. He is one for three in the ball game. Not a crowd blues. favorite, yeah. I think that probably part of that had to do with the jawing that went on between Bates and the pitcher in Pagnazzi earlier. Pitch comes down low for a ball. And it's one ball and no strikes. Good portion of our crowd is still on hand because there will be an award ceremony after this game. They expect to see the home team get the trophy for the championship. Which is a strike call. Pagnazzi comes from baseball territory. He is from Arizona in Tucson. He played at Central Arizona Junior College. 1 1 pitch coming. Ball is swung on and missed for strike two. And it's one ball and two strikes. I guess the most impressive thing about Schiraldi right now is not only the velocity his ball still has, but the movement it has. He's still moving it up and down and in and out. Here's the stretch. The pitch misses wide for a ball. And it's two and two. Norm Roberts would be next. Arkansas right in the teeth of its order. With the Razorbacks with a long way to go. Texas leads it 12 to nothing. Pitch is swung on and fouled back, and the count holds two balls and two strikes. Call now as Pagnazzi steps back. It's a swung on and missed for strike three, and Pagnazzi is down on strikes again for the second time in the game. Giraldi has struck out seven. There are two outs in the bottom of the eighth, and Norm Roberts is the batter. Norm Roberts, Arkansas's power here, but he can also hit for average. Here's the pitch. There is a strike called, and it's 0 1. Been handed a note that says Texas hosts regional with a win, so maybe the baseball committee had another vote. Pitch is high for a ball. Got a call and said it was 12 nothing. What do you want to do? Well, they appealed, Bill, and they gave him a strike. Said he went around 0 and 2. There's the first base umpire that Texas appealed to. That is Ken Eldridge. Pitch is wide for a ball. One ball and two strikes. Giraldi sets, pitches high for a ball. Two balls and two strikes. <laughs> Swing and a miss, he struck him out. Calvin Giraldi extremely happy with that. In the eighth. There are no runs on one hit, no errors, and nobody left off. Check it, one left on base. We have played through eight innings. Texas leads Arkansas 12 to nothing. You're watching the Southwest Conference Baseball Tournament Championship Ball Game on Home Sports Entertainment. Set with Lubbock Christian College this weekend, Thursday at
new shortstop for the Arkansas Razorbacks is number one Ellis Roby a freshman out of North Little Rock is in for the Razorbacks he is replacing Laird who pinch hit that was in the seventh inning he has played now yeah, he's a frame we didn't get him introduced a moment ago David Denny is the batter first pitch is down low for one ball and no strikes so Arkansas has used three different shortstops in the game Denny is two for four all of the scoring in this game came in the first three innings which is up high for ball two and it's two balls and no strikes Texas got four in the second inning eight runs in the third including a grand slam homer by Jose Tolentino their cleanup hitter and the man on the mound young freshman Dennis Shanks gave up that home run nice picture of coach Gus looking at their pitcher Shanks there's that slow like knuckle curve sinker whatever you want to call it it's been working for Shanks the last five innings especially that one rode up high for ball three he has walked one man He's allowed just four hits since coming in, but one of them was the big circuit blast by Tolentino. 3-0 pitch on the way. Strike call to David Denny, and it's three balls and one strike. Three-one pitch down low for ball four. Will bring up Steve LeBay, the right fielder, who is 0 for 2. He walked, had a sacrifice fly to drive in a run. But he's popped out to the catcher and flied out to the shortstop. Texas with the lead man on in the top of the ninth, leading Arkansas 12 to nothing. Pitch is wide. Catcher Pagnazzi has to block it, throw down to second as the runner moves over, and he's safe. It'll be a wild pitch as it bounced in the dirt. Pagnazzi did all he could to keep it from getting by. Here's another good look at that. That ball really way outside bounces. Pagnazzi does a good job of blocking it, as you said, Bill. Gets by the second baseman Harrison, but shortstop's there to back him up. Nice job by the young freshman back behind second base on the ball that got back. So there's a runner in scoring position for LeBay, which is swung on and missed for a strike. It's one ball, one strike to Steve LeBay. Shanks doing a good job of mixing up his pitches. Off speed with a fastball. Fastball doesn't look that, that quick, but when you put it with that off speed stuff that he's got, it can be quite effective. the stretch stepping back is the pitcher now he's ready delivers line drive left field base hit runs going to score the bay is going to go to second with a double Thirteen to nothing. Texas scoring here in the ninth after not scoring since the third. There's David Denny who came in on the double. Here's a good look at that pitch. Slow breaking pitch that LeBay waited on and then drove it deep into left field off the wall right at the 340 mark. Robert makes a play on but it's too late. It is the 12th hit for Texas. And with nobody out, there is still a man in scoring position, this time for Mike Trent, who is 0 for 3, walked and scored a run in the third inning. But then who didn't? Texas scored eight <laughs> runs in that frame. There's ball one, one ball and no strikes. As a matter of fact, Mr. Tolentino scored twice in that frame. Here's the stretch, the pitch, high for a ball, it's 2-0. Texas 13 to nothing over Arkansas in the top of the ninth inning. Championship ball game of the Southwest Conference Baseball Tournament, Game 7. 
Texas trying to win five consecutive tournament championships. Time call now as first baseman is going to come over and talk to his pitcher. That Shanks and Kraus. There's Cliff Gustafson. Just soon get this thing over with. And now Joe Bob Taylor is going to go out and break up the conversation. Kind of an interesting visit. It's yeah. <laughs> Kraus and the pitcher just walked off behind the mound <laughs> toward the first base side as if they were. Maybe Ralph, was asking, a while. maybe Ralph was asking Shanks where they were going to eat after What's the ball game. What's happening at the Hilton tonight, gang? <laughs> Two and zero oh to Mike Trent. Here's the stretch, the pitch inside for ball three, and it's three and zero. Oh. Now Shanks had pitched seven and two thirds innings in three previous appearances. That was his total work all year. He came in in the third of this one and is working now in the ninth. So you can tell that the young man has gone farther than he had before. Pitch comes inside for ball four, and he has walked Mike Trenter to a board. That's right, because those seven and two thirds innings were stretched over three games. So he's gone away. This is probably it. Norm's probably going to come out and take him out. Comes the Arkansas coach Norm DeBryan, who, despite the booze that the Dish Park Field crowd is giving him right now, is one of the really nice guys in college baseball and one of the superb coaches in college athletics. He was named Coach of the Year in the Southwest Conference by the Associated Press after he turned around a season that looked like it might be disastrous for the Razorbacks. They had lost six games when Texas left there. They wound up losing only two more the rest of the season in conference campaigning. And Joe Bob Taylor is going to go out and talk to Norm, and they're going to make a pitching change. They're going to go to the bullpen, and the young freshman is going to come out here in the ninth inning. But it bodes well for the University of Arkansas. A young team in the field. It's a young pitcher who's done a good job. He's got a good future at the University of Arkansas. And a new pitcher coming in for the Razorbacks now. That it's Tim Dietz. Well, he who began it is the man who ends it. Dietz pitched on Saturday night against Texas. He was the starting pitcher in that ball game. That was that 9 to 2 loss for Texas. Dietz from oh, just a freshman. And he's from Tulsa, Oklahoma, Tulsa Hale High School. He's 6 and 3 on the year. He's been in 13 ball games. Has been in only four games in relief. He had started nine games, 58 and a third innings he had pitched. He had walked 27 and struck out 27 during that time. As we said, he's a freshman from Tulsa Hale High School. Actually, he's a freshman redshirt. He had an arm injury laid out his first year. It's all conference, all city, all metro, all state. Starting pitcher for a team in the Oklahoma All-Star game. See his motion there as he comes from the right side. Big kid, six foot three, 200 pounds. We were talking earlier about the age of this Arkansas team, Steve. Of the suit up squad here in the conference tournament, they have only two seniors on that team Scott Lowski, uh, who has played regularly, and Charlie Corbell, who is one of the pitchers. Otherwise, it is an underclassman squad entirely, so they will be back. And they are not through in 1983. Razorbacks hopeful of getting a playoff berth, although right now they trail Texas 13 to nothing in their bid to get the automatic qualification from the Southwest Conference. Brian Burroughs, the third baseman, is the batter. Burroughs is one for one. He has walked twice, has had a sacrifice bunt. He's driven in two runs for Texas. Here's the pitch to Burroughs, and it is a swing and a miss for a strike. Tried to hold up, just couldn't do it. Tim Dietz was awfully effective in the tail end of the Southwest Conference campaign for Arkansas. 
won something like six straight games for the Razorbacks. Shakes off one side. Now is ready. Here's the pitch. That one off the fist foul over the first base. Phil Bethay trying to make the play and didn't pick it up. Bethay was an All-American <laughs> in Texas, too, as a fielder. Just going to say, he's lost a little couple of steps there since the early 60s. He played Major League Baseball, was up with the Twins for a while. to the count to Brian Burris. Here's the stretch. Pitch, swing, and a miss. He struck him out. He just blew that one by him. That is the third, fourth strikeout for Arkansas pitching. The batter is Bill Bates. Longhorn second baseman. He gets some nice hands as he comes to the plate. He's two for four. He's driven in a couple of runs. Was on base the first three times he came to the plate. Left of the runner at second. The pitch to Bates comes inside, and now we're going to have some problems as that ball got away. And coming out again, we got some folks that uh, are going to try to discuss all of this. Bates was the man earlier who took a pitch inside. And now Tim Dietz is, or rather Mark Berry, is coming yeah. after Bates. And the umpire saying, you go back over there where you belong. <laughs> Cliff Gustafson talking to Bates as he comes in. And Bates walking away from Gustafson now. And Cliff again, he had this discussion a minute ago. The two umpires now talking to one another. And the whole Arkansas team heading back into the dugout. Bates goes back over to the on-deck circle. And walks over toward the Texas dugout. Let's see what happens here. Trying to cool down a little bit now. Yeah. Seraldi will get up and do some throwing now. Just looking toward the dugout. One ball and no strikes to Bill Bates. most frightening part of that was Mr. Bates didn't let go of the bat when he started to go out there. I'm sure he just forgot he had him. 1-0 pitch coming. The runners moved up on the play as it was a wild pitch through all of that. LeBay went to third. Trent went to second base. Pitch was outside for ball three and it's 3-0. Three and oh. Pitch coming down low for ball four. Bates is locked. Texas has the bases loaded with one out here in the ninth inning. Longhorns with a 13 to nothing lead and now threatening for more. There is Mike Print at second base. There is LeBay at third base. Batter is Mike Brumley. The pitch comes in, gets away from the catcher. Here comes LeBay to the plate. It's 14 to nothing. possibility of a double play taken away because now there are runners on second and third. Nobody on first. He scored as a pass ball. Ball chopped to the shortstop and they will come home to get the lead runner who is tagged out at the plate as he had to be. As Trent is down six to two if you're scoring. Bates goes around to third from second base. Brumley is on at first base on the fielder's choice. Kirk Killingsworth is the batter. As you look at Mike Brumley over at first base, there's Killingsworth. He is 0 
for five. The DH for the Longhorns struck out twice, flied out twice, rattled into a fielder's choice, and now calls time as he steps back. There are two outs at the top of the night. Texas leads Arkansas 14 to nothing. Longhorns got four runs in the second, eight runs in the third, and they have put two on the board here in the top of the night. Here's the stretch by Tim Dietz, the third Razorback pitcher. He's down low for ball one. That is one ball and no strikes. A game now just over three hours old. Calvin Chiraldi up and loosening up out in the bullpen area. Swing and a miss. Killingsworth going for all of it with that one. It was one ball and one strike. Longhorns are still three away from the most runs ever scored in a conference tournament. Houston did that 17 to 10 over A&M. Ball foul back onto the screen and it's one ball and two strikes. That came in 1978 in the fifth game of the tournament. One two to Killingsworth. Here's the stretch. Pitch, ball line, one hopper. Second baseman knocks it down. He'll have the play at first in time. So in the ninth inning, Arkansas puts Texas down, but not before the Longhorns have scored two more runs. They did it with a base hit. There were no errors, and there were two men left on base. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Texas now leads Arkansas 14 to nothing. And the Longhorns are on their way to the NCAA playoffs. As you look at Cliff Gustafson, he's talking to Al Lundstedt, the business manager of athletics for the university. Clint Thomas, the pitching coach for Texas, standing alongside. As you see some of the fans with the Texas flag in the background, and I'm sure that what Mr. Lundstedt and Mr. Gustafson were talking about is the fact that Texas will be hosting a regional tournament. The Longhorns winning this tournament. So in two weeks, they'll have one. As you look at the Texas flag and the centennial flag of the university, we talked about the fact that the University of Texas is 100 years old in 1983. Panoramic view of Dishfalk Field as Calvin Chiraldi returns to the mound in an effort to complete a shutout as he leads here 14 to nothing. Razorbacks in the bottom of the ninth inning will have Loggins, Barry, and Krauss, the five, six, and seven hitters coming up against Calvin Giraldi. You mentioned Clint Thomas, the pitching coach, who has to be one happy man right now. Giraldi is just three outs away from giving Texas its fourth complete game in this tournament. That's what you got to have if you're going to go far in NCAA competition. The defense was a problem last night for Texas, but the pitching has been everything that it was programmed to be and uh, touted to be prior to the season. Everybody thought the Longhorns pitching would be the thing that carried them. And in this tournament, it's been very good. Mike Loggins, a switch hitter from the left side. The pitch is outside for a ball. It's one ball and no strikes. He is 0 for 2. He has grounded out, fly to center, and has walked. Chiraldi pumps, delivers, strike ball on the inside corner, and it's one and one. One one pitch coming, swing and a miss for strike two, and it's one ball and two strikes to Mike Loggins. Two pitch coming, ball is fouled back, and the count will hold at one ball and two strikes. Arkansas would dearly love to get on the scoreboard at least here in the bottom of the ninth. Well, Chiraldi so far has allowed four hits. Razorbacks had three men on in the second inning for a very brief time. They had loaded the bases, but an overrun at third base resulted in a rundown to cut down that lead runner. Otherwise, they had a runner in the fourth, two in the fifth, one in the sixth, and one in the eighth. Pitches outside for a ball. 
There's two balls and no strikes. And there is Clint Thomas. Longhorn pitching coach right there with Cliff Gustafson. Howard Herrera, the student assistant coach. Down seed. Ball hit right side. Coming in is LeBay. Drifting over. He'll make the catch. And that is not LeBay. That is Bud Ray who is out in right field. Take see we have anybody else. Any other difference out there? I don't. I think. Let's see. That still looks like Train out in center. That is Bud Ray, though, another junior college transfer. I am not a genius. Bud Ray is a right-handed thrower, and LeBay is a left-handed <laughs> thrower. Pitch is swung on by Mark Berry and fouled away. Four strike one. Berry's over two. Wind up pitches down low for ball one, one ball and one strike. Swing and a miss for strike two. And it's one and two. Sure, the kind of control Calvin Schwalde has had. Barry was the fellow who overran third base. And I, that's the only person to reach third base against Chiraldi today. He has really been dominating in this ball game. One two pitch coming ball lifted right side coming in is Ray going back is Bates Ray calling and he makes the catch. There are two away. It is down to the last out Ralph Kraus. The first baseman for Arkansas is the batter. Here's our look at our new right fielder, Bud Ray, making the same kind of play Steve LeBay made an inning or so ago. Bates going out, Ray coming in, Ray calling him off to make the catch. Krause is 0 for 2, takes the first pitch outside from Chiraldi. It is one ball and no strikes. He walked, he flied to left, he was called out on strikes. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss for strike one. We're out really getting into it now with each pitch sensing that much closer. 1 1 pitch coming. Ground ball back up the middle. Brumley can't get it. It's through for a base hit. The fifth hit off of Calvin Chiraldi is that one just under the glove of Brumley, who had ranged over toward third. And the batter now is Mike Robinson, the center fielder. Robinson is 0 for 3, he reached on an arrow, struck out, fly to center field. The stretch by Chiraldi. The pitch is a strike. It's 0-1-1. Nice pitch, looked like a slider. Breaking right down and in. It'll take it down. Third baseman Burroughs gloves it, throws to second. He got him, and the game is over. The Southwest Conference Tournament in 1983 is history. The Texas Longhorns are the champions. As the Longhorns have won here, defeating the Arkansas Razorbacks, the final score, Texas 14, Arkansas nothing. We'll be back. You're watching Home Sports Entertainment.
want to do. All right. There goes uh, Lundstedt out with the microphone right now. Uh, the microphone's being put out to home plate right now. To the home plate area of the field for the presentation Here's of the, the presentation. trophy and the naming of the outstanding player of the 1983 Southwest Conference Tournament. First, the writers and broadcasters covering the 1983 tournament have voted an outstanding player of the tournament from the University of Texas, unanimously picked number 24, Jose Colombo. Surprise, surprise. attention to home plate where Dr. L. O. Tom Morgan, chairman of the Athletic Council of the University of Texas, will present the 1983 championship trophy to Coach Cliff Gustafson and the University of Texas Longhorn. Dr. L. O. Tom Morgan, the University of Texas Athletics Council, giving the University of Texas the championship trophy for it. We're not getting the team now. All right. That's Dr. Morgan, who said, giving Coach Cliff Gustafson the seventh annual championship trophy from the postseason conference tournament, the fifth straight year the University of Texas has won it. Coach Gustafson giving it to Mike Capel. He'll try to make a couple of words here. We're not sure whether we can pick it up. We'll stop just for a second to see if we can get Coach Gustafson's comments. If not... Thank you very much. I'd like to take this opportunity to also congratulate a very fine Arkansas Razorback team.
is Coach Cliff Gustafson accepting the seventh annual Southwest Conference postseason trophy. The Longhorns have now won it five years in a row, and as you heard him say, they will be hosting the, uh, the NCAA regional championships here. Bill, we're not sure whether it be a 16 regional or what, but the University of Texas will be at home. Well, as they play the eyes of Texas in the background, and one of the things that uh, Texas has fought for was hosting a tournament because it's an easier route to Omaha. I guess in the years that Cliff Gustafson has been here, Texas has been a part of uh, regional tournaments now for 14 years, as we've said. They have advanced to Omaha 10 times, and uh, in the previous years here in Austin, they've been very successful. They've lost only one time in a tournament in Austin. That was in 1980 when Hawaii beat them, as we said, and Hawaii finished second in the tournament after all. Next to being the home team in the regional, perhaps the most satisfying part of the last two weeks for the Texas baseball team has to be the pitching staff. Since the A&M series, the last seven baseball games, the University of Texas has gotten complete games in six of those. Calvin Chiraldi has gone nine innings three times. Mike Capel has gone nine innings twice. Roger Clemens came back from a swamp of sorts to go nine innings, even though it was in a losing cause. So the University of Texas pitching depth, which gave them the preseason number one ranking, seems to be coming around at exactly the right time, which is the NCAA playoff time. Well, I think the other thing, too, Steve, is that Texas really turned it around. You know, Texas had lost four or five ball games going into the series over in College Station. They won those three ball games, then tied together the two wins in the conference tournament before losing last night and then came back with the win today that puts them on into the playoffs. When you start getting in, in college baseball playoffs, you start looking at the kind of team that it takes to win. And the pitching staff, as Steve just said, is probably the biggest key that you've got. Uh, it requires good fielding naturally. It requires good hitting. But in the last analysis, in a short tournament, particularly like a four-team tournament, it's a double elimination affair, we have just seen one where pitching was so vitally important, and especially if you are to lose a game along the way and you got to come out of the loser's bracket. So Texas is, I don't think anybody's ever decided whether this team is as good as the teams they've had in the past, but it's certainly competitive, and it's certainly there. And there is number 24, Jose Tolentino, the unanimous choice as most valuable player in this Southwest Conference postseason tournament, deservedly so. Nine runs batted in, a grand slam home run, another home run. He fielded flawlessly. He has had a remarkable year for the University of Texas. Well, he is assumed in this role, too, in this particular tournament, he's assumed a leadership role, and that's one of the things that Cliff has really needed for this ball club. He's not had a leader who really took charge, and we saw that very much in Tolentino, particularly in this last ball game. What Coach Gustin has said in the past is you need a team leader who, who can inspire people but play well at the same time. You can try to be a team leader, but if you aren't playing well, people won't pay attention. Jose Tolentino is playing well. He's doing both. He's playing very well. He's leading the ball club. And for a team that came together with a lot of junior college guys and started early with a team that was not really together, uh, perhaps they are now as they head to the NCAA playoffs, which will be held here in Austin in two weeks. And it uh, is at that time that Texas begins the quest for the campaign to Omaha, which the College World Series, of course, is held there. And that's the dream, I guess, that every college baseball player has. And certainly for the University of Texas, that's been the case. It's been a great Southwest Conference baseball tournament. It's been fun to be a part of it with you. And I hope you've enjoyed it on Home Sports Entertainment. Our final score tonight was Arkansas 14. Let me do that one more time. <laughs> Texas 14. <laughs> Arkansas nothing. As the Longhorns have come from uh, the game that uh, we thought last night might well have been the final, the 5-4 to four loss. They won this one going away with a great pitching performance from Calvin Chiraldi. And Texas goes to the NCAA playoffs once again, 14th time under Cliff Gustafson. For Steve Ross, for our director, Gerald Roach, for the folks in the truck, and the people behind the cameras who have made all the pretty pictures possible, I'm Bill Little, and we thank you for being part of Home Sports Entertainment.